representative in February as he pushed for the initiative to collect over the 800,000 required signatures. Even if the initiative is passed, it would likely have to be ratified by Congress after 2016 to take effect. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. A cool guy from middle school is still sporting his fat pair of jinkos. A stunned St. Peter's Square crowd hears the Pope getting bitched out by God, and an eighth grader caked in makeup is probably really confident. This is The Onion Week in Review. This week, a Pew Research Center poll found that the vast majority of Americans would watch a television show called Love Trap, with most saying that regardless of the show's genre or quality, they would tune in weekly to see its stars stumble into romantic triangles, double-cross one another, and contend with whatever the titular Love Trap refers to. The survey confirmed that 62% of Americans would likely watch Love Trap to see a shrewd but cold-hearted Southern Belle named Tammy. 23% of the nation hoped the show would be referred to as The Trap by its most loyal fans, and 15% of respondents said they simply needed something to watch. And in this week's science news, a biologist completes a five-minute study of the pathetic organism in his mirror. In other news, a man confidently hits send on the worst job application a company has ever seen. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything that you want. All you have to do, dial in toll-free here. The number is brought to you by ProXPN. It's 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And, of course, you can join us online at freetalklive.com. Enjoy all the features that we have waiting for you on the website. You get to actually create the content. So when you go to freetalklive.com, everything that you see as you scroll down the page, those numbered items as you roll down the page, those were all put there by listeners like you and then voted upon by listeners like you. So if you like what you see, you can vote it up. If you don't, you can vote it down and go to freetalklive.com to uh, to do that. It's free, unlike those other talk show host websites. So we'll take your calls. I'm Ian, by the way. And Mark. Uh, let's jump right into the phones and the fun. We go to Vincent. In New York on Skype. Our Skype username, by the way, is lrn.fm. Go ahead, Vincent. Hey, how are you guys? Hey, great. Go ahead with your thoughts. All right. Okay, so um, uh, my friend's boyfriend just, uh, um, uh, he graduated from um, uh, like uh, Army r- r- Ranger School, right? Okay. And so like there's like this picture of him, right? And like, you know, like pretty much like the um, status is like, you know, like, thank you to, like, everyone, you know, I passed and stuff like that, right? And, like, it's this picture of him, and he's standing next to an anarcho-capitalist flag. And the anarcho- and the flag says, Rangers, not for the weak or the or faint-hearted. And, like, you know, like, I'm just, like, you know, like, so, like, you know, like, in, like, awe because it's, like, this, like, army ranger standing next to the anarcho-capitalist flag. Well, now, is, hold on. You're saying the know, flag is... Anarcho-capitalist uh, colors are black and gold, as I understand it. Yep. Um, wh- uh, how is it an anarcho-capitalist flag? Are you saying it's just a like a, a military flag that happens to be black and gold with some sort of military saying on it? Um, no, no, no. Like literally, like imagine the like anarcho-capitalist flag, and like in the flag it says Rangers, not for the weak or faint-hearted, and like you know, like it's like um a the, the, the flag. Is like you know, I like place at this like you know, like army camp. Kind yeah, of. I but, highly doubt that they've co-opted the anarcho-capitalist flag. No, I think that the Rangers had it first. Yeah. Um, the Rangers patch is a uh, it, it's it's a chevron. I, I don't know chevron, the shield looking thing, mm-hmm. and it's uh, half uh, one of their patches is half uh, gold and half black. If you look at their gear. Most of the time, Rangers is either written in black or in gold, and oftentimes it's on black or gold gear. Um, I think that probably what you're seeing is 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 a legit Rangers flag, um, yeah, with like probably legit Rangers stuff on them. Um, yeah, I mean uh, the anarcho capitalists don't own black and gold. And let's not forget that the swastika, um, you know, means something entirely different to the Indians. Yeah, that's true. Oh, really? Oh, well, that explains it, you know, because I don't know why. I just thought, like, you know, like, when I first saw it, I'm like, like, what the heck? You know, like, I was very, very confused. Well, but, there you uh, go. Anything yeah. else you want to share tonight, Vincent? Um, uh, no, that's it. Thank Thanks you. for the call. Appreciate hearing from you. Yeah, I mean, there's only so many colors you can put together to have a flag, right? So it's inevitable 
that uh, somebody else is going to pick your colors. But I think it's interesting. The, just and by the, the way, whole, I can't stand anarcho-capitalist as a term. I think as a term, horrible. I can't stand flags. Horrible. Um, well, the, yeah, there you go. Two, <laughs> two terrible things uh, run together. I kind of like our peace flag in here. I, I get it, but I mean, it's it. You know, to some extent, you're you're. Uh, you're horning in on the realm of the warmongers. I mean, a, With flag, a peace flag. A flag has always been the standard of militaries. It's I see. only recently that flags have meant anything to the hoi polloi like us. You know. So why pe- not co-opt it for peace then? It's it's a it's a thought process. Yeah. Why not paint your gun pink with flowers on it? I mean, you can People do have that. People done it. But um, just the Hello Kitty guns. There, there are. Yeah. There there are, and they're interesting. But they kill people just as dead. Oh yeah. And flags. You know, they mean. I, I'm just. I'm. Jack wants to to learn things. My son, six years old, wants to learn things about uh, World War II. So we've been watching some World War II stuff, and he's asking me questions like, "Why does? Why are they doing this? Why does this happen, Daddy?" And uh, Jack, keep an eye on the flags. Just keep watching the flags, and you'll sort of figure out what's going on here, because it's really difficult hmm. to explain these things. But once you can, once you start explaining it by the colors and the flags, the thing it gets a lot easier, because then it's like, oh, well, those people are on the side of that flag. Let's kill them. And it's the these flags are excuses uh, that that rich people have always used to get poor people to kill each other. Let's go to Pizza Guy. He's in Fargo, North Dakota. You're on Free Talk Live, Pizza Guy. Hey, no breath tonight, huh? Even though it's Wednesday. Yeah, I don't know where he is, actually. I hope he's all right. He hasn't, uh, oh, I don't think he told us he wasn't going to be here. Go ahead. Well, it was a semi school related topic, uh, so I was holding until Wednesday, but uh, yeah, let's uh, launch here. I was thinking about student loans, and I was thinking um, kind of about the structure of uh, how they are. I don't know if you know this, but they're the only loan that I know of that you're not allowed to default on. That's right, yeah. You can't go uh, bankrupt know. from student loans. In a real world, no bank would issue them the way uh, that they've been issued. A lot, they're a lot like the Dream Act of, of the houses, where it's like everybody deserves a house. It was like everyone deserves a college education, and so the federal government like goes out there and you know guarantees all these loans. Oh nope, they'll never be able to default on them and anything like that. And really, uh, when you start to look at it the way it is, it's really only a loan in name only. It's more like a tax on those who are gullible enough and motivated enough to do what they're told is a a meter of success when they're young adults. And that's what it is, is a a tax on those who were gullible and motivated enough to sign a piece of paper. It's not a loan, but it is a tax. Explain to me the difference and why it is that you've come to this conclusion. Well, because in a, in a loan, what you what you do is is uh, well, at least in, in a secured loan, you um, you say I'm going to buy this pro- this object, so you give me the money, and then if I can't come up with it, if if I can't pay you back, then you come take this object. That's how loans work, and that's why uh, to mitigate their risk, you're supposed to put a percentage of it down so that they can sell it at a, at you know a loss on what your equity equity would be, and and that's why uh, businesses are are in the business of making loans, right? Because there's something they can come and take. They're all secured. Unsecured well, loans are for very small amounts, not hundreds of thousands of dollars. Hold on. An unsecured loans are for what? Small amounts, okay. not hundreds of thousands of dollars, even 30. I mean, you'd, you'd be hard-pressed, especially as an 18-year-old who's never done anything, to go out and get a, a $30,000, $50,000, $100,000 unsecured loan, mm-hmm. right? But- well, I mean, they, they do give unsecured loans uh, to people that are more likely to um, be able to pay them off. I mean, an Amex card is a really good example. Um, and, you know, you can get high limits on credit cards if you want to do that. Back when I was in the, the working world and working at Clear Channel, I had some pretty high limits. Um, probably yeah, high, once you're but, working already. Right. But but um, essentially what the, 18, what, what the law has allowed the 18-year-old to do is to – put up for collateral his or her uh, future and that, you know, and, and the government will, will sort of und- undersign for them. Um, and oftentimes they don't pay them back. I mean, you know, m- there's a lot of people no, that just simply can't no. pay these things back. No, that's, that's not, no, there's no not paying it back. You can't default on these loans. They stick with you. You can't, well, you can't, uh, you can default on them, but they're not going to go away. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Any other any other loan uh, disappears after what is it in the Bible? Seven years. Uh, well, you have to go through bankruptcy loan. first, don't you? It doesn't just automatically no. go away. 
Student loans don't do that. I know that, but you said any other loan will disappear, and I'm saying you have to go through bankruptcy first. Isn't that right? Oh, no. If, no, if you don't make a payment on a loan for seven years, it just disappears. Really? And, yep. Any loan that you don't make a payment on for seven years uh, goes away. Now, in between here and then, uh, there's going to be a lot of things that happen to your credit, and probably before all of that, they're just going to send, uh, they're just going to have your wages garnished, so they're going to repossess. Mm-hmm. But uh, possibly garnish your wages enough to, to end the loan inside of the seven years on gotcha. a loan because it's, it's such a high amount. And that's, I mean, really, when you take a look at it, when you really look at it, that um, it's government funding and it's government financiers. What it is is welfare for middle class bureaucrats and universities. Uh, paid for by the taxes of those who are those who are gullible and motivated enough to sign a document after 13 years of K through 12 education. In a lot of ways, what you're saying is true, is because they've been able to sort of inflate the market for um, the market demand for college loans, um, and they've been able to make a lot of easy money available. You've been seeing the price of college going skyrocketing, and. Um, you know, it's really it's it's fascinating to see what uh, what's going to happen. I Pizza think there's a guy. bubble. I'm wondering what has motivated your call tonight. If you want to hang on, tell us more. Do you have a loan? It's Free Talk Live. One little joint supplement. You know this powerful little pill is great for your joints. It even has powerful benefits to help increase your mobility and flexibility. But the joint supplements of today are sadly incomplete because they don't give you the joint relief you're looking for. Until now. Introducing the complimentary two-week sample of Instaflex, our most powerful joint formula ever. It's the number one selling joint supplement at GNC. The only thing our complimentary sample of Instaflex is missing is the price. Because right now, we're offering adults a complimentary two-week sample as part of a nationwide giveaway. Call and claim your sample today. 1-800-608-9424. Instaflex provides powerful, effective joint relief for your knees, hands, even your hips. Prove it to yourself by calling now for your complimentary sample. Instaflex is available at GNC, Walgreens, and CVS. But you can only get your complimentary two-week sample by calling 1-800-608-9424. Call now for your two-week Instaflex sample. 1-800-608-9424. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American, covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on to join the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. 
There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial in here, toll free, and bring up anything you want. The number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And, of course, you can go online to get interactive at freetalklive.com. You can also get free coffee. Yeah, you can get a free pound of coffee by going to coffee.freetalklive.com. There, we have partnered with BuzzBox Coffee to not only bring you the best of the best coffee, coffee that's shade-grown, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica. But we bu- we partnered with BuzzBox for the purpose of having you help us to get microloans to people around the world. For every 10 people who sign up for the- to get their coffee at coffee.freetalklive.com, we'll be able to give another microloan through BuzzBox to some family around the world that needs some kind of help. And, uh, you know, there was a the story of a guy who needed some carpentry tools so that he could be do be able to do some uh, ca- carpentry work and fixing it up in his, uh, his hometown. And th- I think that this is really the way that we can help people. Giving them a hand up instead of a handout because just giving some, you know, you know the old saying, giving them a, a fish, they'll eat for a day. Teach them how to fish, they'll eat for a lifetime. And I think that this is really an opportunity. And I think we can change people's lives this way. Go get a free pound of coffee at coffee.freetalklive.com. If you like it, continue to get your coffee there because it's great coffee. Coffee.freetalklive.com. All right, we go back to the pizza guy. He's in Fargo, called in about student loans, says he thinks they're taxes, actually. Uh, and, the, and the reason you think they're taxes is that uh, they're taxes on gullible people who uh, signed an agreement after getting a, you know, several years worth of uh, government education to continue this on to where they'll end up ponying up a bunch of money uh, over the years because they can't get out of it. There's no way to default on the loan. I don't know if it's quite a tax, but I understand the argument you're making. And, you know, you had asked me, do you have student loans? And so, yeah, I probably should have opened with, um, yeah, I, I, I can't have an objective opinion here. Uh, I still owe, you know, a good 30 grand, um, you know. And what was, what was the total business, amount when you started? Uh, 30 grand. Because <laughs> <laughs> I have to pay as, as low as possible because, um, well, for, when you take a standard deduction, you can still um, take off the interest you pay on them right off the top. So, for technical tax reasons, um, the interest rate is actually like a seventy-five uh, percent of what it actually is, and so I'm better off paying basically any other loan I have yeah. before those ones financially. So the the wife package I got came complete with a uh, you know a five-figure student loan, and uh, hers her, the interest rate is extraordinarily low on her student loan, and it's through a bank, and um, it's only like two point five percent or something, and so. We, we've we tried to pay off all our debt, but the student loan's still kind of sticking around because, frankly, it's lower than inflation, and I kind of wonder why you would pay it off. Yeah, no, de- I mean, you know, the whole idea of, like, debt, money has a cost, you know what I mean? So people who don't take out loans and don't get into debt, they're really just um, using pretty expensive money if they can get money cheaper than inflation or at your, you know, and so when you're poor, it actually makes more sense to take out more loans. It's a dangerous game, but uh, because food costs go up at like 10, 15, 20% a year, if you can take out a loan to buy your food and buy an asset now, next year you'll have a greater real value and you'll have purchased that money at a lower rate than the loan you would have taken out at. So um, lots of loans are really be real careful buying food with loaned money. I mean, that sounds like uh, a real risky endeavor. You don't want to buy too much food or it'll uh, go bad on you. 
it, it's black magic right now. I'm cycling about fifteen thousand dollars on credit cards, but they're uh, they're at zero percent for the next two years. Right, and this uh, is this is a game that a lot of people play, and we play. My wife and I play. I've played it too, and I think we're still um, on the hook for some of it. Is is that you know you've got this uh, this this amount on a credit card, and somebody else sends you a credit card offers uh, for three percent the value of the loan. We'll give you zero percent for eighteen months, and then you. Move the money over for 3%, the cost of 3%. You move the money over, then you don't pay any interest for the next 18 months. And then even cheaper now. 0%. It, you can get it for 0% for two years. Okay. You can, uh, money doesn't cost anything these days. And that, that's why if you're using real money that you have in your hands that you've earned instead of acquiring assets with it, that's where you – but this is all neither here nor there. The point is, is that uh, for 13 years, children are forced to be told uh, – Go to college, go to college, go to college, and right. you're put into special special education. You know, I don't know. Yeah, you know, I I was in a smart kid uh, group, just like Ian. You know, where it was like me and ten other kids who we didn't have to sit through the boring classes. We got to go to special classes, and all they did is tell us how special we are and how you know we're seven year old kids, eight year old kids. Your whole mm -hmm. life, you're told college, go to college, do whatever you want. You're so brilliant. You can make money doing anything. What do you want to do? You can do anything. They sell you a fantasy, yeah. right? It's no different than a, than a Ponzi scheme where, well, you know, if you did your due diligence, but at the time, the numbers you're seeing and the numbers you're being told, the difference is, is that for 13 years, you're being told this lie. Right. Parents so worry their butts off that their kids are getting 30-second uh, TV ads while they watch uh, Super Friends or whatever, but they'll send their kids to public schools where they get a 13-year commercial for mm. um, college. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of of the opinion, certainly some careers need college. If you're going to be an engineer, a lawyer, a doctor, uh, there's probably somebody else out there that uh, some other career that absolutely needs a, a college professor. If you want to do these things, you absolutely need a college education. But the vast majority of them out there, it, it seems like, you know, half of it's like a, a vacation where you're drunk most of the time. And the other half <laughs> is like a networking thing. Yep, and you know, you know, I, you know, it's hard for me to blame it too much. I mean, that is where I met my wife. I was able to go study abroad in Japan and, and meet my wife there. It was a good time, but ultimately a waste of money. I didn't need that kind of a vacation at the age of 19. Well, and they drive up the price as much as they can in the process. The the college professors rewrite the $1,000 books um, every year so that, or, you know, whatever these books are, these $300 books every year so that you have to buy the newest one. And if you decide that you're going to get them in some way, or shape, or form uh, more cheaply, they'll sue that company that's trying to sell them more cheaply. Well, and there's an ever-increasing uh, line of, uh, of bodies of students that'll come in there and fill up the space and once the space is filled up, that's another reason to raise prices right there. And so if they're, you know, the, the lower schools, the high schools and such are doing their job and brainwashing uh, young people to want to go to college more and more year after year, uh, the, you know, the, the demand is high. The supply is, uh, you know, they're not exactly building new colleges all over the place. So it gives them a reason to increase the rates. As, and also you've got the fact that uh, everybody with a college degree means a college degree isn't really worth anything anymore. Right. I mean, if, if everyone's got it, and not everyone does, but if a lot of people have it, then it's just you know, a lot just of, on the same par with those people. A lot of businesses, mostly excluding the government and some major corporations, a lot of businesses have found that the college education isn't that important to them. Thanks, Pizza Guy, for the call tonight. Appreciate it, and good luck with the $30,000 in college loans. Sounds like a little on the low side for college loans. I've heard fifty, hundred thousand, two hundred thousand. 200000 Crazy. You know, in, in my career, which was radio sales, which is radio sales, whenever college would come up briefly, it'd be like, and uh, what school did you go to? Yeah, I never finished college. Okay. And, you know, like mm -hmm. they would just go on. Yeah, well, you didn't make the same mistake I did. Right. <laughs> oh, this guy's pretty smart. I should hire him. 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. You can tell us your experience with college. Was it worth it? It's Free Talk Live. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. 
If you'd like to listen to GCN programs on the go, I have great news. GCN has created a Droid and iPhone application, and it's free. Just as easy as going to GCNlive.com, click on the banner and download. Before you know it, you'll be listening to your favorite hard-hitting GCN shows, live or on demand, right on your Droid or iPhone, 24-7 and on the go. So download the Droid and iPhone app free by clicking on the banner at GCNlive.com. Thanks again for listening to GCNlive.com. Again, that's GCNlive.com. Good people need help. The Homeowners Association said we had weeds and fined us $25. We told them they had the wrong house. They said if we didn't pay it, they'd file a lien. Our attorney demanded photographs, witnesses, and told them if they couldn't provide this, they must cease and desist. Issue solved. Worry less and live more with LSProtection.com. That's LSProtection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. You can pre-order your tickets now for just $60 at Keenvention.info, or you can pay with Bitcoin. Visit Keenvention.info for more information and to lock in your tickets at the pre-order $60 price for the whole weekend. Visit Keenvention.info for more. Or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Burkridge, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. A prison reform group issued a disturbing new study this week calling conditions in women's correctional facilities deplorably unsexy. The report contends that women's prisons are bleak, dangerous environments with shockingly few soapy showers and erotically charged pillow fights. According to the Prison Justice Initiative, quote, it's a shame that in today's society we still have jails that don't encourage kittenish girl-on-girl -girl exploration. Prison shouldn't be a hotbed of gang violence and drugs. It should be a steamy Shangri-La where caged nymphets discover the sexuality away from the leering eyes of male society. The investigation revealed living conditions that many are calling cruel and degrading, with not in a fun or kinky way. The study's author argues that incarceration should be about more than just punishment. The purpose of prison isn't just to lock people in a box and forget about them. It's to provide opportunities for naughty girls to play nice with each other. Next up, a team of jock scientists have reportedly thrown the cure for asthma onto the roof of the lab. We'll talk to the nerds struggling to retrieve it. This is the Onion News Network. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. And, of course, you can bring up anything you want. More shocking spying news coming out of the U.K. here with the GCHQ. That's their equivalent of the NSA. We can talk about that. I know, Mark, you are really interested in talking about a fighter or someone who at least would like to fight who has Down syndrome. The state apparently is standing in his way. Uh, we will give you more information about that. Of course, you can bring up whatever's on your mind. Maybe you've got a story about... 
college and how it really wasn't so great after all. Or maybe it was great. Maybe it was this wonderful time for you where you met all kinds of useful people and you learned all kinds of interesting and useful things. Right. Here on Free Talk Live, we've been talking about the college loan situation for, I mean, many years. I think for 10 years, we've been saying that basically college education ain't what it's cracked up to be. But there are a lot of people I've, I, I know a lot of people that disagree with me on this subject. These aren't stupid people. Um, they're, These are people who think college was great. Right. Well, okay. I mean, you know, I, I had a, uh, a friend who uh, was, you know, intelligent, influential, had a uh, college degree. Um, you know, I was having this conversation with her uh, husband and... You know, her husband's he just always kind of listens to me as opposed to uh, taking a side or anything like that. But she was willing to take a side. Her side was, no, absolutely, my college education was absolutely worth it. Hmm. Um, now, consider there have been studies done, and the more you pay for something, the more, more, you're, it's like, worth it. the more yeah. you're likely to believe it. Like that, that old chair it. that you had. Which one are you used to have to? like a really funky old chair that you paid way too much money no, no, for? No, 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 no. I bought it used it cost a lot oh. um, but and now now you've paid five hundred dollars for studio chairs at this point because they're good for your back and because you're getting older the fact is i'm as old, i was as old then when i bought that chair that you didn't like that as you are now spending the kind of money on those chairs so you know hindsight might be twisted a little bit for you now, buddy. So anyway, um, I believe in investing good money in chairs. I also believe in investing good money in education. I don't believe your money is well spent in the college university paradigm that we're under these days. I think you can get as good of an education. Remember, I'm for education. I'm often against school. I think you can get as good of an education today as you would uh, get otherwise, but you can do it on the job. Have somebody else pay for it. I believe in even going to college as long as you can get somebody else to pay for it. It's when you pay for it that I believe it's the problem. Also, when you sign up with government programs to get it paid for, that's a little scary to me, too. Anyway, this person said that her college uh, degree was worth it, and then I asked her, well, what's the degree in? And she told me what her degree was in, and it had nothing to do with her line of work. And I said, how can you tell me the degree is worth it when it had nothing to do with the work you're in? And you know, to her standpoint, the the education itself, the four years in school itself is what's worth it. That somehow it's a hurdle that one should uh, should should cross. And that's so she couldn't connect it to any tangible benefit in real life. Indeed. But you when you go to college, you start at 18, you get out at 22. Right. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of growth that goes on from 18 to 22. Yeah, no doubt. What the people in college that went to college that say this don't tend to recognize, realize, they tend to marginalize um, and obfuscate is, is that I was 18 to 22 too, and I learned a lot in that time frame also. You were in prison. Well, I was in prison, but you were 18 to 22, and you had a job, and you learned That's a right. lot too, right? I sure did. So yep. people learn a lot from 18 to 22. Those were important years for me. But those, but the things you learn, you you gotta. I mean, you know, here I am. Another day has gone by, and I have yet to use algebra. Mm-hmm. You know, as a matter of fact, I've gone years without algebra. And I'm not saying you shouldn't learn algebra. I think it's very interesting and all that. But let's not teach our kids algebra as though algebra is something that our kids are necessarily yeah. going to use. Yeah, I remember uh, when I went to college, I did two years at a community college, and thank goodness, I'm glad I didn't go any further. And I, I actually went to the same could... community college and spent a little bit of money on some some, some classes too. Yeah, I, I wish I could have the time back personally. I mean, I, it really doesn't feel to me like I got anything out of it. I mean, I met a nice lady there who I became friends with, but you know that was not the most important. You could have met somebody that you could have been friends with elsewhere. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I you know looking back on the education uh, that I got, there really wasn't anything there that I'm using today. I did take film uh, class there, but I already knew how to edit. You know, movies. I'd already been doing that on my own. I was able to basically mail it in for that class, so to speak. I mean, I didn't really even go to it. I had a deal with the teacher that, look, you know, I'll just turn this in. I was one of the first people done with the the final project of making kind of a home movie thing, you know, your your student film. Um, And I didn't need his help or anything like that. It wasn't really 
There was nothing. I there took for Spanish me. one and Spanish two. I knew how to speak the language. I was talking to the teacher in Spanish, mm-hmm. um, you know, fooling with her during during class. Oh, yeah. And I kind of felt like, yeah, I'm getting over. Who's getting over here? I was paying for a class that I already had the knowledge right. on. That's and, and there's these general requirements that they have that you have to it doesn't matter. I went to school for radio and television broadcasting. I only took maybe three classes that had any relevancy to those uh so to that particular subject everything else was you know english speech uh math yeah. science all that stuff and the, and, core and requirements. the science book i had mark was the same science book i had in 11th grade the exact same book now I did go to gifted school, so maybe that's one of the reasons. But still, there's like, a reason you they be call. Kidding me? There's a reason they call the freshman year of community college 13th grade. Yeah. Because it's really not that much different. And also, High if you with are gonna, if you are going to go to a university, um, you probably should do your first two years of the community college and spend a lot less money to doing save the it. Money. Sure, because they have to take you after the two years, don't they? At the at least the state university. I believe that's the case. Yeah. But it's just I don't know. It, there's so much, so many ways for kids to be become so mired in debt, and it's you know I mean when you if you listen to these young people now, they'll blame the corporations, they'll blame the rich people that they have all these debt. It's fascinating. Wow. You signed on a on a dotted line to give your soul to the government or to the bank that is uh, giving the loan. It's mm-hmm. you know backed by the government, and now it's somebody else's fault. Shame on you. Share your experience if you'd like to join us here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. If you're a teacher in college and you're aware of this stuff, do you feel guilty? Do you feel guilty for, you know, perpetuating a system that is in many ways a total scam or a near total scam? As you pointed out, Mark, there are certain things, certain uh, job descriptions that college is pretty much a necessity for. But beyond that, I mean, come on, what, communications degrees, degrees in music, degrees in arts? I mean, are these really helping people? The the, the music degree is kind of like playing the lottery. I mean, there are people, there are careers that you're going to need a music degree. If you want to play an instrument. music? No, if you want to play an instrument for a living, you better have one of these degrees from a music specializing school. Are you telling me that uh, the members of Nirvana had uh, musical degrees? I don't know. Maybe they did. I'm not talking about the members of Nirvana, my friend. There ain't no screaming electric guitar uh, degree. I'm talking about people playing in an orchestra, which, Ah. by the way, are dying across the country because they can't get fun. Yeah, I was going to say, how many orchestral players are actually I'm not pros? recommending orchestra for a career, Ian. I'm just saying. How, I'm saying I mean, how if you want to be pros? in one, you need to have a degree to do it. Okay, I, but what about like a volunteer orchestra? That may not be a degree requirement thing. Absolutely, it's not a degree requirement right. thing. Um, you know, I would rec- <laughs> I don't recommend art, period, as a career. You're, it's, a, it's a brave thing to do. That's why I called it the lottery. Yeah, it's hard enough to make money at art with I don't recommend degree. buying lottery tickets to make money yeah. either. That's why I called it the lottery. Arts, uh, you know, art can be a real struggle for people. I mean, people struggle for a long time to try to make musical gigs for themselves. I highly doubt having a degree is going to help in any of in many of those roles. Many of them struggle their whole lives and never make it. Right, and that's without a degree. And I imagine it'd be even harder when they've got a college degree to pay off. Let's go to Aaron, listening in St. George, Utah, on KZNU. Go ahead, Aaron. Oh uh, yeah, thanks for taking the call. I'm. Yeah. I want to share my anecdotal experience. I hold um, degrees from three different institutions, oh, and one of wow. which is a master's degree. I was one of the lucky ones that noticed early that it was a racket. And Hang on, Aaron. I want you to going. tell your whole story here in a moment. We're going to get back to you. More with Aaron in St. George. Your call's welcome. 855-450-FREE. It's Free Talk Live. Business owners, listen up. Give me an L. Give me another L. Incorporation, protection, success, incorporate your business. LLC. 
If you're about to start a business, these three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why LLC.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-915-2955 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from LLC.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Incorporation, protection, success. Incorporate your business. Call now for your free guide. 1-800-915-2955. That's 1-800-915-2955. I didn't believe it. Neither did I. No way could you professionally remove unwanted hair, pain-free, and at home. My thoughts exactly. Remove my face and body hair without expensive, painful office visits. Not possible. Great minds think alike. Until I tried No-No Pro. Mm Mm-hmm. Wait, you tried No-No? Yes, and it works. I use it on my face, legs, bikini line. We're BFFs, and you didn't tell me about No-No? Here, this is my new No-No Pro. The most powerful No-No made. Custom treatment levels, less hair in less time, perfect for any skin type. Try it. No hair, no pain, no time consuming expensive office visits no no and no no for a limited time you can try no no pro risk-free you'll also get the facial kit and a travel case get weeks of long-lasting results that's it i'm getting a no no great minds do think alike (laughs) (laughs) try no no pro risk-free by calling 800-952-5760 800 952 5760. That's 800 952 5760. 800 952 5760. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though, it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Take control here, toll-free, 855-450-FREE. And on Skype, you can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. So feel free to reach out there if you can, because you usually will sound better on Skype than you do on the phones. We will get back to your phone calls here in a moment talking about college. And actually, it's you know, this is how I love Free Talk Live. When we get, you know, we bring things in to talk about here, and we will still get to some of those tonight. But somebody called in at the beginning of the show talking about their experience with college loans, and it's not an uncommon experience. A lot of people have these things, and for a lot of people, they are absolutely um, making life very, very difficult. We'll continue with your thoughts and experience here. Eight fifty five four fifty freeze the toll free number. If you need focus and are feeling fatigued and are trying to get the extra edge when it counts, maybe you're in college, 
You can look into modafinil from modup.net. One in five students, according to studies, use this cognitive enhancer offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall so you can get things done. Businessmen around the world are also talking about modafinil from modup.net, how it's making the difference in their work and giving them the critical edge that they need. Now, at modup.net, they provide only the highest premium modafinil with the, uh, the greatest potency so you enjoy significant results. That's why they're the number one sponsor of Reddit's third-party nootropic testing project. Now, remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show, and ModUp.net ships worldwide. It's your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. ModUp.net also is a supporter of the Bitcoin community. You can order from ModUp.net with Bitcoin and get a 33% discount. Plus, to make the deal even better, use code FTL, and you'll get 10 free tablets with your order. So don't forget, code FTL at ModUp.net, M-O-D. DUP.net world class service at a great price. And don't forget code FTL to get the 10 free tablets from modup.net. We go back to Aaron. He's in St. George, Utah. Now, Aaron, you were telling us you have three college degrees. One of them is a master's degree, and that was pretty much all we got out of you before we had to run off to the break. So go ahead. Yeah. So my experience is I, I just wanted to share with you that my degrees have played absolutely zero factor in my ability to attain a job and provide for my family and be a productive member of society. Hmm. Uh, and why I say that is it, at no point did anybody ask what type of degree I got, where it was from, et cetera, et cetera, during the interview process, nor did they ask me if I was a valedictorian, which I was. No one asked me whether or not my GPA met a certain threshold or if I took particular classes. It, it baffled me. And, um, right. I mean, well, it, it didn't just baffle you. I mean, it's got to be really disheartening that uh, here you are, you know, you got your master's degree, valedictorian, and uh, you've put all this time, six years uh, at least, into getting these things. And you're not even going to ask me about them? Well, exactly. Right. And, and it may not surprise you at all, but it was, I actually work for government wow. right now. Okay. And that's even more surprising. It does me surprise me because of- government seems to really like degrees. That, well, they're the ones fueling this racket. So anyway, when, when I look at this whole thing, it's amazing to me. The second observation that I, I, I wanted to share was, you know, algebra really hasn't changed since it was basically founded and, and discovered and, and talked about and written about back in the olden age. And yet each year you see a brand new book that comes out. And, of course, <laughs> these publishers send the brand new algebra book to the, te- the professors saying, hey, you can have this for free. All you got to do is uh, put it on your, you, you put it on your syllabus as a required test. Mm-hmm. And there's the racket there. All of a sudden, they're not paying for teaching materials. Neither is their budget impacted. And they get to spend money on other fancy things like, you know, research opportunities uh, or other things around. The last thing I was want to say is once I realized that there, this was a racket and things were working my way, I was one of the fortunate ones. I got out of school. Both my wife got a degree, and I got my degrees for a total of about $48,000, hmm. okay? We were lucky in that we decided early that we weren't going to pay for school. We were going to find ways to do that. Now, scholarships generally were the, the way that we did it, but we still took the money. And let me tell you why. I took that money and financed a lot of my own businesses and startups. And I think that that opportunity out there is is available for other people. So instead of using that money in a bad way in terms of throwing it to pay for some $300,000, $400,000 salary professor for his, for his salary, why don't you go to why don't you go to the cheapest college you can find, still obtain the degree, but use your money to be productive in an investment or some other way. No, I've, I've um, never had a college loan, so I don't know anything about the process. Are you saying you can just get a college loan and then spend a portion of it on a private investment? Spend it all. Well, what's interesting is technically, no, you can't. Legally, no. When you sign a line, no. These should be for education expenses only. However, some change in the regulation that happened about the time when I was in school, uh, 2003, 2005, somewhere in that range, all of a sudden – the schools lost control of the money almost entirely, and a lot of that money was shifted back to the students. And now all of a sudden you could pay for off-campus housing, 
you could pay for Meals. you know any tool any tools you needed like a computer or mm. anything transportation etc next thing you know it's like well yeah i'm going to buy this you know uh $2000 macbook pro and i'm going to use it for school yeah right i was using it for uh video editing or for for mm. whatever purpose i needed it now, now, do you I have to do you have to somehow itemize what you're buying with this money? Does anybody check this over? No. I mean, is there no. anybody no. you're it's answering to? No. They just cut you a no. check, huh? They Here just you go, cut kid. you a check. So, they'll pay the school first, of course. Now, don't get me wrong; the school gets its cut first. But after that, hey, mm-hmm. the money's all yours. The hmm. most egregious offense of this is in um, in aircraft school, like in in these uh, avionics schools, where they're going to learn to be pilots. Okay. To rent a plane to go up and get the flight hours necessary to obtain your license, a plane's usually like two hundred fifty to four hundred dollars an hour, depending on what type of plane, prop or jet engine, and et cetera. Okay. Well, I saw some of my buddies that were going after these pilot licenses. They would take money in terms of thirty thousand, forty thousand dollars a semester, gentlemen, and they would go out there and they'd buy themselves Escalades. They'd buy themselves. Uh, fancy sport cars and all sorts of things. And then, oh, I just didn't log my hours this semester. Unfortunately, that's all come back to haunt them. The days of bachelorhood and funness and all those free choices that they had, it haunts them today. And and so part of me says, hey, I I like the freedom of over my own money if I'm going to borrow it. But at the same time, man, these guys are $400,000, $500,000 in school debt, and they don't have their pilot's licenses. Yeah. It's Jeez. interesting. The whole thing. It's the whole thing's a racket. It's for, kind of like so the stripper that's going to college. Um, you know, one out of seventy-four strippers are go actually using the money to go to college. I knew that girl. Um, right, like that one. Yeah. <laughs> the other seventy-three are crack addicts and uh, or eh, whatever. Coke. And whatever it is. I'm. I'm just. I, I'm just that. making a point here. I'm. I'm exaggerating. Yeah. Using hyperbole for the for the purpose of making a point. But yeah, I have a friend who. Took the college loans. Um, Jason Osborne, whom the, uh, the the studios are named after here and mm. at Free Talk Live because he uh, is the owner of SACL CAI and sponsored the show for such a long time. He took the loans, invested in businesses. Now, these loans are interest-free for the entire yeah. duration <laughs> of your education. So as long as you're in school, you don't have to pay interest. There's no interest so on So is them. he still in school? No. Then oh. then when he's done, whammo bammo, he pays them all off with the profits from the business and has the business up and running. Hmm. Bingo. Amazing. Aaron, thanks for sharing your call and thoughts tonight. Appreciate yeah. hearing from you. Appreciate the perspective. Uh, so, so it was the idea, Mark, you get the college loan, you do business with it, and then eventually you pay it off, but all the while you take like one class so you don't get charged interest? Is that the Look, idea? I'm not going to tell people how to go and uh, use the system because I believe that this is a, you know, this is like this is like paying, playing with painkillers, hmm. addictive drugs. I, I do not mean. believe, th- I think that this is a poor system for the average person to try to implement. I wouldn't even try to implement this. Um, this is... I don't like playing with other people's money, personally. I mean, I understand. And, well, you, you, know, you have an a, abhorrence to debt, and I disagree with you on this. Well, g- good for people who are able to do this stuff. I just don't like the idea of playing with other people's money. I don't like putting money on the line that's not mine uh, to risk. That makes me feel very uncomfortable. I've not. It's not like I've avoided debt completely. I've had home loans uh, in the past, so I think debt can be useful. I think it can be something that you can handle but you really need to know what you're getting into, and I don't think the average college student knows what they're getting into. All they know is what they've been told over and over again, and being told something over and over again doesn't mean you know it, right? That just means you've been indoctrinated. Well, uh, when you say you don't want to put other people's money on the line, I look at money differently. If we're talking about an individual loaning me money to go to college, that would be entirely different to mm-hmm. me than a bank, an organization that yeah. makes money, loaning people money, has a profit and loss margin that they're a- expecting yeah. is backed up by the government. That's not other people's money. When the when it, you're talking about a government money, they're just creating that stuff out of thin air. True. Yeah. Still, I don't like having people over my head. 855-453. That's, That's 855-450-3733. Still to come here tonight, the man with Down syndrome who wants to fight in the ring. We'll talk about it here in moments on Free Talk Live. Geico Motorcycle presents Reflections from the Road. Every time I rev my engine down an open stretch of road, I'm glad I switched to Geico Motorcycle Insurance because nothing feels better than saving money with Geico. 
Except maybe the time I saved a life. A squirrel's life. Gave that little feller mouth to mouth, and then he bit me. On second thought, saving money with GEICO probably feels better. GEICO Motorcycle Insurance. See how much you could save. I'm Chuck Woolery. You know, I don't know about you, but I don't like taking pills for minor arthritis pain, and I really don't like those patches either. But I have found something that works, Australian Dream. It's an arthritis pain relief cream. It's a great product. It doesn't smell or burn. It isn't greasy, and it works. And Australian Dream has an empty jar guarantee, so you can use the whole jar, and if you're not happy, you get your money back. But I doubt that you'll send it back. You know, the stuff really works. Get Australian Dream at Walgreens, CVS, or Walmart. You'll be glad you did. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagen with your Liberty Beat for Wednesday, July 16, 2014. Gold open today at $1,300, silver open at $20.76, and Bitcoin is trading at $615.52. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Accountable Authority, now offering a public database of police abuse and misconduct, online at accountableauthority.com. In the news, new documents released by whistleblower Edward Snowden reveal tools used by the NSA's British counterpart, GCHQ. As first reported by The Intercept, they include seeding the Internet with false information, such as tweaking the results of online polls, inflating page view counts, and manipulating social media sites like Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Documents prove GCHQ used software programs to infiltrate users' computers and spread select messages across social media sites. The revelations follow reports of a civil liberty group challenging the legality of NSA placed data interceptors on fiber optic cables carrying traffic to and from the UK. Monday at the Pentagon, U.S. Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel signed an agreement with the Qatari Defense Minister to provide $11 billion towards enhancing the Qatari's military capabilities. The largest arms deal of the year included the sale of 24 Apache assault helicopters, 247 Pac-3 missiles, and 500 man portable fire-and-forget anti-tank missiles. U.S. defense industry giants Raytheon, Lockheed Martin, and Boeing developed the machinery. Pentagon spokesman Rear Admiral John Kirby said the signing of the agreement highlights the strong partnership between the two countries in the area of security and defense. Over the 4th of July weekend, the small California suburb, Boyle Heights, held the first ever cannabis-centric farmer's market, as reported by the LA Times. Organized by the California Heritage Market, the operation sold pot to card-carrying medical marijuana patients inside a warehouse behind the West Coast Collective Dispensary, located within an industrial zone. While city officials did not publicly object to the market while it was running, the city attorney has since requested a temporary restraining order to stop operations, alleging the market violates city land use law and is causing a public nuisance. David Welch, the market's representative, said the city's latest move doesn't comply with Proposition D, a ballot measure passed last year describing the legal parameters for dispensaries to remain open. Support for Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud, all natural teeth whitener. Go to MyMagicMud.com to hear a short interview with Dr. Griffin Cole. That's MyMagicMud.com. And support comes from Brave New Books, now offering Pro Pure Water Filtration, the only gravity driven all in one fluoride removal system that also alkalizes the water. Find them in Austin, 1904 Guadalupe Street, or online, BraveNewBookstore.com. This is the Liberty Beat. For Wednesday, July 16, 2014, check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. 
agrochemical company Syngenta is requesting an emergency exemption to use the class of pesticides that have been linked to honeybee and bird deaths. Syngenta said they are representing UK farmers who believe limited use of the chemical could save crops from aphid and flea beetle damage. The company says there are no available alternatives. The Environment Secretary, the National Farmers Union and the Government's Advisory Committee on Pesticides all stand against the European Union ban on the neonics, arguing there is insufficient proof of harm. A groundbreaking study published in the British Journal of Nutrition analyzed over 300 peer-reviewed publications and found that organically grown food contains substantially higher levels of antioxidants at the same calorie level as conventionally grown crops. Other studies suggest that some antioxidants have been linked to a lower risk of cancer and other disease. The report contradicts a previous study conducted by Stanford two years ago that found few differences in nutritional content of organic and conventionally grown foods. Both studies found pesticide residue was much higher on conventionally grown fruits and vegetables, but downplayed the results because the higher levels were still within government set safety limits. Organic farming, which eliminates chemical fertilizers and pesticides, offers ecological benefits like healthier soils, but does produce less bountiful harvests. The home improvement store Home Depot is partnering with 3D printing company MakerBot to sell MakerBot replicators in 12 Home Depot stores in New York City, California, and Illinois. MakerBot staff also plans to have staff on hand demonstrating 3D printing technology to customers. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Mass Appeal. Affordable, high-quality printing. Now accepting Bitcoin. Online at MassAppealInc.com. And support comes from GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. Homegrown food on every table. That's GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, July 16, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Sources within the Vatican confirmed Tuesday that Pope Benedict XVI has dispatched an elite team of six bishops to sabotage leading contraceptive manufacturer Pfizer. Codenamed Conclave 6, the highly trained team of bishops will reportedly infiltrate the heavily guarded compound, detonate extremely powerful charges at key points within the factory, and then escape to a nearby safe house. The Catholic Church can trust only the best with defending God's plan. Conclave 6 is the deadliest team of bishops I've ever laid out. Eyes on. The Pope denied rumors that a B team of needle wielding priests had been deployed to a latex factory in New Jersey to poke tiny holes into thousands of Durex condoms. Locally, the best part of a gay 12 year old's day is the half hour he spends eating lunch alone in a stairwell. Calling it his only respite from constant ridicule and mockery, seventh grader Ben McElroy says life doesn't get better than the moments he spends quietly laying out his lunch on a secluded staircase while the rest of his classmates are in the cafeteria. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, inviting you to bring up anything you want. Dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And joining you in our studio tonight, it's Ian. And Mark. We've been talking about education, but there's a lot on the table tonight that we can talk about, including some disturbing new spying news uh, coming out of Glenn Greenwald, presumably uh, courtesy of Edward Snowden. Give you the latest there. And uh, plus, Mark, you were really interested in this case out of Florida with a, uh, a male who has Down syndrome who's interested in fighting professionally, apparently. And uh, like kickbox, I guess, or uh, like MMA kind of stuff. Yeah, that kind of thing. So apparently the state has uh, decided to stand in his way of reaching his dreams. We'll talk about that. You can also join us here at 855-450-FREE or via Skype at Skype username LRN.FM as we jump right back into your calls and thoughts. Joe Lou is listening in St. George, Utah to KZNU. Hello, Joe Lou. Hello. Hi, you're on the air. Um, I am a 61-year-old. Um, I went to three semesters of college straight out of high school and got involved with a abusive now ex-husband, mm. so didn't go back to school. Tried to go back to school twice since then. There were no student loans involved those times. Didn't even know anything about them. But now that I'm back in school, I started back in when I was 59, and I've taken those student loans, and what is subsidized the other one is unsubsidized and it accrues um interest immediately hmm. 
The other one doesn't accrue interest really? until after you've stopped school for six months. Yeah. So why, I mean, why down. in your early 60s have you gone back to school? Because it was a, I guess it's a lifelong dream that I had of going into psychology. My dad had a PhD in psychology, hmm. and it's just been a real interest of mine. And whenever, whenever I talk to people, if I feel um, less of a person trying to tell them that I know about psychology because I haven't actually had the psychology classes. I see. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you feel more uh, certain about yourself, representing yourself as a knowledgeable person if you have that school behind you. It's more of a, a personal confidence thing. Correct. Cool. Yeah, I can see why uh, people yeah. would choose to do that. Um, I mean, it's it's li unlikely that, uh, you know, in, in your early 60s that you'll go back and have a, a terribly long career in psychology. But if you're doing it for your own uh, purposes, I see nothing wrong with that. I imagine you'll probably keep the drinking under control at your age in college as well. It right. seems like you'd be less likely. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, less, oh, less, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't imagine you're as attracted to joining sororities uh, or anything like that. Yeah, if they try to get you to Not binge drink, don't do it. Yeah, no, right. Binge drinking bad. Also, the hazings are a little weird too. Yeah, so. don't don't go for any of that hazing yeah. stuff. Joe Lou, thanks for sharing I, your story tonight. I do appreciate <laughs> hearing from you. The toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. So we're right around the corner from a uh, an Ivy League school here. Um, it's an hour down the road. What Dartmouth? Yeah, Dartmouth. Okay, gotcha. you know what an Ivy League school is? The fancy schools. You know what I love doing? I love because you went to the smart kids school in yeah. our town, and I went to the regular kids school. I just love <laughs> having people see right here on national radio. You don't know your butt from a hole in the ground. Um, no, in fact, an Ivy League school is a school, any school that was uh, in the United States and pre-revolutionary war. So oh, really? I didn't know that about There's that. only eight or nine. I think it's eight of them. Huh. Um, very, very few of them. University of Pennsylvania. I just thought them. Ivy League was just fancy schools for rich kids. It's often used like that. Um, but isn't that true? I mean, are there Ivy League schools that are cheap? Well, they're, they're not affordable. Cheap. They're not cheap, <laughs> but they will. They, right. they want other people for other lots of people for other reasons. So you can get subsidized and for whatever reasons that they might decide they want you in. Yeah, but these are like the hard schools to get in, right? These they, are the they fancy may be. schools. It depends on it depends. You have to play up. It's an Ivy League school. If you want to get in and you don't have the connections, you have you're gonna have to yeah. p play up something that's special about you gotcha. to get in. And if you do that, you may very well because they do want a, a big diversity of lots of different mm. ideas and people and things like that there oftentimes but i'd thought about um you know i've thought about it just like uh, is it joanne uh don't remember <laughs> joe lou right joe lou um, there you go yeah w going back to school i've thought about it it'd be interesting i'd like to get a history degree or maybe a degree in economics um or maybe you know do the the dual degree thing or whatever mm. but i just can't justify it in my mind i've got things to do during the day i i can't either i mean if you really want to go and take a college class there are plenty of them that are available online for free go right. ahead and get the knowledge why do you need the paper and this is at this point you definitely don't need the paper mit has made all of its uh, courses available online for free yeah and uh, this is another thing is not schools, the only one though right there's other stuff out it, there it used to be bigger than it is now but there's auditing Right? Like, you know what yeah, auditing yeah. means? You sign up for a class. You can go and take the class. You just don't get a grade at the end, right? I don't even know if you sign up, but, I mean, you go, you, you just go in and sit on in on a class oh, and you really? take the class. Um, you know, different schools have different ways of doing it, hmm. but you just, you can sit in on a class. One it's thing, true. It's not like they take attendance. Now, now, consider this for a second. You can sit in on the classes you want to take, mm -hmm. get the, the education that, that will be there. At the end of four years, the person who sits in and doesn't uh, you know, take, pay for the course, they have the same education that the person who did pay for the course has, but they didn't pay for it and they won't get a sheepskin. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, proves without a doubt that the sheepskin is what costs $100,000 or whatever it is. Now, if you're doing an audit of a class, do you actually, if you turn in a report, do you get a grade on it? <laughs> Probably not. But Like how, I, I'm trying to remember back when I was in college, I feel like there might have been an attendance taken at some point, but I don't really recall. It certainly didn't seem as well, important school, in college whether or not you were The school we went attending. to didn't have as many people generally in the, um, you know, in a class. True. But when you're going to a university, You've got hundreds, you can have, right? yeah, you can have 
in the low thousands really? in a class. Yeah, if they Jeez. have it in an auditorium, yeah, they absolutely do that That's stuff. Crazy. But certainly there are hundreds of kids in a class. Right, so they wouldn't know, right? Like if you turned in you know, paper in this class that you're auditing, unless the teacher is checking every single name against a list of registered students – you're probably going to get a grade. I don't know. I'm just totally speculating on that. Well, part. the teacher isn't even touching your papers. It's going to be a teacher's the aide. Teacher's aide. Yeah, which are one doing all the work and oftentimes teaching the classes too. What the hell do those teachers do? Research. <laughs> Research. <laughs> Sounds like a huge scam to me. <laughs> Such a scam from top to bottom. But you're absolutely right. You can get the education you want on the internet if you choose to well, educate right. that, yourself. That's, that's just but it. The, it goes to show the college isn't about education as much as it's about the system and getting out that piece of paper and, and creating this thing that's supposedly so valuable out there and putting it up on this pedestal as though you must have it in order for you to be successful. Is that really what makes somebody a success? Is the fact they have the piece of paper, or is it that they have the knowledge and that they can apply that knowledge? And I think that you know you can learn it on the internet, or you can get it um, at work. You know, doing my job, which was radio sales, radio ad sales. There was a good friend of mine who started. Well, he's not a good friend anymore, but a guy I really liked, I guess, is the way to describe it. Tom, uh, Tom, if you remember him, um, and he. Uh, you know, he started with his degree. He had his. Uh, he went to the University of Florida. He had a marketing degree, mm. four years. He played up. He this must know how to sell. He played up this marketing degree. Oh, you know, and and got his job. And and this was his first job out of college and that kind of thing. Hmm. This was my first real career out of prison, mind yep. you. So here he is, two different out of starting college. points. Yep. I'm out of prison, and uh, you know, did you Tom, own him in the the sales figures? Tom, well, absolutely, I was. Uh, <laughs> you know, absolutely. Um, I I got the awards and the whole thing and. Mm. Tom went Did on to a different gears. I mean, is that why you're not friends anymore? Or what? No, it didn't. Um, he he just went on to a okay. different career. I mean, you've got to apply yourself. You've got to do follow up. It's uh, you know, sales has its own special skill sets, and most of it isn't what people think it is. You don't like learn low to... level mind control or whatever yeah. they think sales is about. You don't learn sales sitting in a classroom. You don't. I don't believe that. And so much of uh, so much of the world is sales, and so many good ways to make money is sales. Isn't the number one paying profession in the world sales? I would have to look that up, but um, it certainly That's what is I've involved heard. in every. Uh, <laughs> well, I can't imagine it's not because every entrepreneur is essentially a salesman too. All right. Well, you can tell us what your experience has been with college or whatever's on your mind. We've got all kinds of other stuff to talk about tonight, including the California news about the possible breakup into six pieces it's moving ahead 855 450 free that's 855 450 3733 you can take control here on free talk live Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 
Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leaving them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. The Shire Free Church offers a sanctuary to those seeking an escape from state churches. The Shire Free Church is an interfaith, diverse group of people that may not share identical theological beliefs. As a member in or minister of the Shire Free Church, you are a sovereign individual and may be the faith of your choice. We don't claim to have all of the answers. We are open to all peaceful people. We want to learn from each other. What unifies the Shire Free Church and its diverse members is peace, love, and liberty. There are many paths to God, one for every individual. The Shire Free Church does not define a specific path beyond those parameters that must be your foundation. Peace as your way, love as your guide, and liberty as your light. Learn more at church.shiresociety.com. That's church.shiresociety.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up anything here. Toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. A young man trying to get into the world of boxing, or not boxing, I guess mixed martial arts, ultimate fighting kind of stuff. But he's got Down syndrome, and apparently that's a problem, at least for some people. We'll, uh, tell, Mark will tell us more about the story here in moments. We'll continue taking your calls and thoughts. And if you care about online privacy, Take the time to check out ProXPN. It's a global virtual private network that actually encrypts your data. Meaning before anything leaves the network port, whether it's the wired port or the Wi-Fi port on your computer, it's encrypted. That means that before it reaches your internet service provider, all that information cannot be read by your ISP. So they can't know what you're doing anymore. Right now they probably are logging every website you visit and every search term that you enter and maybe keeping that information as long as five years in some cases. You can put a stop to it by going to proxpn.com slash FTL. Download their software. It's available for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, Android devices. You can also get ProXPN functioning with Linux fairly easily. It's just a bit of a different setup. Go to proxpn.com slash FTL. Get started there. You can jump in right away with their free account. And then when you're ready to upgrade to premium, you can do that with our discount code FTL20 to save 20% off the price of their premium account for the lifetime of your account. You get the annual plan that breaks the price down to about 5 bucks a month. It's, an, it's an, an amazing price for great service that actually allows you, uh, when you get the premium account, for instance, unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can connect to, and you can even privately torrent with their premium account. Plus, it'll help you, ProXPAN will help you get around any blocks in your region. Perhaps it's a, a workplace block, a school block, maybe the country that you're living in or visiting is blocking things. ProXPN, 
Very helpful. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Go grab the software and use promo code FTL20 when you're ready to upgrade to the premium account. As we continue here with your calls and your thoughts, Mike's on the line listening in Virginia, Minnesota. Mike, you're on Free Talk Live. How are you doing there? Welcome, sir. You're on the air. Yes, I just, uh, I know that I don't always uh, get the same subject you guys are on because uh, I always get the call after the fact. But anyway, I just wanted to tell you a story about how a, a doctor can get away with murder because the uh, a doctor murdered my first wife. And, oh, my. And although my first wife did have a problem with prescription painkillers, it wasn't as bad until... This one doctor would prescribe her up to 900 pain pills a month. Jeez, that sounds like a lot. Plus give her eight shots a month, plus give her 14 bottles of albuterol. Uh, I don't know if you know what that is. That's I, a nasal inhalant. Okay, I don't know what it is. You spray it in your sinuses, and within three seconds, you're uh, out of your mind. You don't know where you're at, what you're doing. <laughs> wow. Now, why do you believe and, that this do doctor was uh, trying to kill your wife? Well, maybe not in, in a sense of out now doing it, but the fact that he prescribed these multitudes of painkillers, 230, and I'm talking Oxycontin, Oxycodo, Tylenol-4. Uh, was she actually Vicodin. taking all of those? Was she taking 900 pills a month, or was she selling some of them? He was telling her to take five pills at a time. And I didn't even know morphine came in pill form until he prescribed that. And in fact, she had five accidents coming back from because I tried to take her when I could if I wasn't working. And, you know, this was all after the fact that I found out that they would push her out the back door because the other patients were complaining because she was staggering out of the place. And yeah, I after she passed, I, you know, of course, I was in shock. And uh, this was. February 8th of 2005, uh, so you, it's been a while. But I just, one night I heard you guys talking about um, doctors and medicines. And mm -hmm, sure. I'm, unfortunately, with a doctor, you only have two years. And what's even worse is the coroner, you only have six months, and unbeknownst to me. Wait, 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 what do you mean, two I, years, six months? Are we talking about for a lawsuit, or what does that mean? For, yes, yes. You have two months to sue a doctor no matter what. How do you sue a coroner? Where's the coroner fit into all this? Why would you want to sue that person? Well, because uh, they did the autopsy, and after six months after I got the uh, report, uh, it said there was no drugs in her system. And uh, I hmm. called them, and I said, could you explain to me how somebody could take 240 Vicodins the last two weeks of their life and not have it in them? And unfortunately, my first wife was cremated. They said, oh, you know, we're supposed to save blood, but we accidentally destroyed it all, so we can't test no more. Yeah. Wow. And you only have six months to do anything with the coroner. And How I many? Top of that, the police. You said there were five automobile months. accidents in what? In, in six months, is that right? Uh, over like a year, year two-year period. Two-year period, five automobile accidents. I suppose yeah. five automobile accidents over two years is a lot. That's a lot. But... I'm kind of, you know, I'm just it trying is. to figure out, you know, I mean, as the husband here, how was she getting home from the doctor's office? She's sleeping it off in the parking lot. Um, I mean, no, she would try. Like I said, I couldn't always go because I had to work. But there was times like she got picked up by the cops and they said, you're either going to the hospital or the jail. And they had to take her to the hospital to give her some type of shot that reversed the, some of the effects of because he would give her a shot a painkiller shot twice a week, plus all these pills, plus this uh, nasal inhalant, that it's, uh, the, the generic is all, but it's the same effect as albuterol, I believe. What was it that uh, got her on the pain pills in the first place? Was there an accident? Was she injured in some way? Uh, I think uh, she thought she had chronic pain, and uh, back before she found this doctor, like I said, she dealt with it halfway decent, and but she was only getting 30 to 90 pills a month. And I, after all this was said and done, someone told me the first thing I did was I emailed uh, America's Most Wanted. And they, of course, they said it was sad, but that was out of their realm to mm -hmm. contact my local authorities. And I went and I tried to get the county police to uh, put a warrant for his arrest. I, I don't know what you'd get him on. I mean, like you, like you didn't even... S 
when we were talking about it earlier, you seem to admit that, you know, this may not have been his intention to kill her. He just may have been prescribing her what she was looking for. I mean, I don't know. Obviously, I wasn't involved, but 900 pills a month is a lot of uh, a lot of it kind of reminds me of the Michael Jackson case, you know, with the uh, the doctor that was giving him stuff that, you know, it ultimately ended up killing him. But, wow. uh, you know, these are the things that uh, Michael Jackson wanted. But too. even though the doctor says you need to do this, you don't get to use the doctor's recommendations as an excuse to uh, to completely abdicate your own responsibility for what it is you've put into your body. I mean, it's it's nice that people look to doctors as experts and all. I don't know if that's always a smart thing because, you know, they're more educated in certain areas, but they're still humans. They're still fallible. They can still make mistakes. And in a lot of cases, you know, a doctor's mistake can end up killing you. Uh, but I don't know, you know, if there's any evidence whatsoever that this was done on purpose. Is there? Well, it's uh, I don't know what purpose would be, but uh, some of the pharmacies refused to fill it and turned him into. Uh, wow. And Jeez. I took 400 pages and uh, I called the DEA and they said, send this evidence to them. So I sent 400 pages of. All these humongous, uh, I mean, have, have you ever heard of anybody being dis- dis- prescribed 240? Never uh, in my life. Fours? Not unless they're selling pills on the side and they've got some sort of a sweetheart deal where they're kicking back money to the dock. Thanks for the call, Mike. I'm sorry to hear the story. There's more on the way here on Free Talk Live. Springtime is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know spring is the time to stock up at HerbalHealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for spring specials, including our 500 parts per million colloidal silver, all sizes on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, Hootia and Metabolic Complex, and Pro Metabolic, all on sale now. Also, the Anti-Parasite Intestinal Freedom and Warwood Plus Complex, plus Stevia Liquid Sweetener and the Super Enzymes, all on sale for spring at HerbalHealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and click on Spring Specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Tollhouse Morsels, helping you create special moments and memories your family will cherish forever. Visit us at Tollhouse.com. You may bake for birthdays and holidays, but why stop there? Sweeten up the rest of the year by designating monthly dessert days. Treat your family to one of their favorites or surprise them with something new. Either way, you'll create a tradition everyone will love. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash your family today. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, 
I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls about anything. Toll free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that are waiting for you on the website. Freetalklive.com. They're all free. Bitcoins, cryptocurrencies, they're getting all kinds of press. Um, Ian, I saw a another site. Um, it's like the, the Amazon for Japan. I, Rakuten. Thank you. We talked about it last night with Johnny Ray. Did you? Awesome. I, yeah, uh, they're going to take Bitcoin soon, apparently. Yeah, they're taking Bitcoins. And, and the CEO is raving about them or something. This is, uh, I guess this is what I expected when it came to Bitcoins uh, initially, is, is that, uh, you know, what they are is they're a cryptocurrency that allow you to send and receive money on the internet. Actually, they're money that's on the internet, and it just kind of reassigns the value from you to someone else. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess... You know, what I was thinking is, is that first people would use them to move money from one location to another uh, pr relatively cheaply. If you try to do it through PayPal or Western Union or wire transfer or these things, you're setting off all the bells and whistles from every governmental agency, from every government around. You're pay paying huge fees and it's it takes a long time. With Bitcoin, you can do it in seconds um, honestly, you can, uh, you know, yeah, it's seconds. You can really do it in seconds and you can do it quite cheaply for pennies. You can move a million dollars from here to wherever North Korea, um, in seconds for pennies. And that's really valuable. But once businesses find out that, well, you know, we can just accept Bitcoins as opposed to accepting dollars or yen or, mm -hmm. um, yuan or, uh, euros or whatever, then people are going to, keep their money in the Bitcoin. So there's not a transfer fee from Bitcoin into the other um, currency, whatever that might be. And then it's just going to be a domino effect. Other Once one business does it, then another business has to do it in competition with them. And then some other business that's not in competition does it, and then their competition does it. And it just keeps on going until everybody accepts Bitcoins. Well, Rakuten is said to be bigger than Amazon in Japan. Uh, it's also allegedly the largest e-commerce site in Japan. They apparently even operate a bank. So this is if now this isn't a done deal from what I understand. This is the uh, the head of the company talking about accepting Bitcoin. So okay. I don't think it's officially been announced as a done, guaranteed, going to happen sort of thing. But sure does sound like they're talking about it pretty seriously. If you want to get some Bitcoins, uh, the place to go is ExpressCoin.com. They are inexpensive, fast, easy. Completely legal. They're a licensed money, MSB, whatever that is. Money uh, services business? Yeah, money services business. Thank you so much. And their customer service is great. I've done a lot of business through Express Coin. I trust these guys. Um, you know, they're they're great. They're awesome. You can get Bitcoins there and all other lots, lots of other types of uh, cryptocurrencies too. Dogecoin, Litecoin, Blackcoin, Darkcoin, several of them. You can do it in Canada. You can do it from your smartphone by going to ExpressCoin.com and downloading their app. They make it easy for you, expresscoin.com. All right, toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Let's go to Chris calling from Florida in St. Augustine. Hi, Chris. Hey, how's it going, guys? What's on your mind tonight? Uh, well, actually, uh, I'll be moving up there um, summer of 2015. And, awesome. Wow, uh, congrats. Being from Florida, <laughs> thanks. Uh, and being from Florida, uh, such as yourself, um, 
what's the weather like up there? <laughs> sure. Um, it's like Florida right now. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, right now it's a heck of a lot better than Florida. You you walk outside and you're having the skin burn from your flesh. But um, yeah, yeah. yeah. But during the winter, I suspect is what you're talking about. One does not have to shovel sunshine. Uh, you can go inside. The air conditioner is running, and you're fine. And to a large extent, if you're not into any kind of the winter sports. That's what most people do here in the winter. There are a few people going outside and doing their thing. Do you? Is your uh, chosen career line is that uh, indoor or outdoor business? Uh, well, uh, pretty much like outdoors. But whenever I get up there, I'm not going to have a job anyways. Well, you, could, <laughs> yeah. you know. If, if you're if you work outdoor, I not the first winter I was here, but the second winter I was here, I built my house in the winter, in the snowiest winter that they'd Crazy. had in a hundred and something years. And me and a couple of friends, we built that house during yeah, the winter. Most construction slows down significantly during the winter. It time. does. It's a pain to move the snow around, and many construction guys do things like uh, snow plowing and and other stuff during the winter. Yeah, but. It can be done. All you have to do is dress for it. And that's really what it comes to with the weather here is you need to dress for it. In the same way that in Florida, you're not going to be wearing wool slacks in the summer. In the winter here, you're not going to be running around in Bermuda shorts. And so, you know, that's how that goes. We have heaters. Your <laughs> your domicile will be a livable temperature <laughs> because you will set it at that. And that'll be fine. Also, I live out in the country. I need. I have a 400 foot driveway that is not. Uh, the house isn't visible from the road. Somebody comes with a plow on the front of their truck and shoves all the snow to the side and clears out my area. And I've got to shovel a, a pathway to uh, to my outdoor wood boiler and you know a couple of other things. Ian lives in town and he has to do yeah like a sidewalk and a little bit of a driveway, mm -hmm. um, but not nearly as much uh, outdoor stuff. And then there are people that live in apartments who. Basically, have to do nothing. Yeah, they pay for it. They for their rent. Right, with their rent, the the landlord comes and puts, you know, salts the steps and makes sure that that everything's it fine. Common area maintenance. That's that's what it is. Yeah. So, I I would say that the weather isn't the concern that you might have, um, you know, being from Florida. It just really depends on how you arrange your life. If you live out, in a, if you if you get a yurt and you live out on uh, twenty undeveloped acres, yep, you're going to deal with some snow during the winter. Yeah, all right. All it's right. Well, beautiful, though. Like I mean, a... besides all that, uh, you know, yeah, there's some work involved in getting through the wintertime up here. It's the Granite State. These people are pretty pretty hardy folks uh, because they have to deal with this stuff. But as Mark pointed out, there is comforts. You know, we do have uh, heat. And I also just found this year for the first time, I got one of these little hand warmer things. Like, they are electronic. You plug it in. You can get them on, on Amazon. Uh, shop.freetalklive.com. I spent 40 bucks on this thing. It's a rechargeable battery, basically, that creates heat. And uh, I put that thing ah. in my pocket. And if I need, because my, it doesn't matter to me. Like, I don't know if I've got bad circulation or what it is, but it doesn't matter how much I dress my trunk up, which, you know, you're supposed to keep your trunk warm, right? If you keep your trunk warm, the rest of your body will be okay, generally. But it doesn't matter how warm I keep the rest of my body. My extremities get very, very cold. So, uh, you know, I have to have something to, or it helps me to have some. I can stay outside longer if I have something that I can kind of reheat my hands on. I used to use, like, my stomach. I'd stick my hand up inside, like my chest. I would kind of hold my hand there if I were outside at like a protest or something like that. Um, so the, the yeah. hand warmer thing helps me uh, with that. So there's tools up here that can help make things uh, more comfortable, I think. But Yeah, uh, well, it, that was my greatest concern about moving up there. I mean, I've lived in Florida my whole life. Yeah, me too, yep. man. Uh, me too. Yep. I don't even own a jacket, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get one. Um, the, the, the fact is, is that oftentimes you can go to secondhand stores and get your winter gear relatively cheaply, mm -hmm. but you're going to need to get it. There's no doubt about it. Um, one thing that I would advise is the fact is it costs more money to heat a house than it does to air condition it. Um, so it's mm -hmm. going to cost. It costs a little bit more. There's no doubt about it. But I think that you'll probably agree that there are plenty of people, you know, people that believe in bigger government moving to Florida every day. Right. Yeah, and I got to go. <laughs> yeah. Warm weather does not buy freedom. You know, there are a lot of people that complain about uh, moving to New Hampshire for more freedom, and they talk about the weather, but, uh, you know, <laughs> really? Well, you've got weather. 
I love the weather. I think it's so great here because it's so different throughout the year. There's a tremendous range. I mean, right now I mentioned uh, that it feels like Florida, and it's close in Keene. It's 69 degrees at the moment. Where you live, it's 75, so it's not that far off. And, and when it gets hot in New, New Hampshire, it gets hot, and it gets humid uh, during the summertime. It's nothing like Florida, though. How, how long are the summers, roughly? Uh, it depends. So, it's, like, it could snow as late as uh, April or in some cases, you know, late April or The whatever. summers are a couple of months, um, a couple, three months, and you'll need, you know, you should have some air conditioning for that time period. But the thing is, is you generally can turn your air conditioner off at night. A lot of people don't have air conditioning, although I do, and it's nice to have it. I can tell sure you that. Is. Hey, uh, thanks for the call, well, I Chris. I don't even have uh, AC. No, oh, good a Lord. lot of people don't. A lot of people don't have AC up here. A, yeah, a shocking he's talking amount. about in Florida. I know that. I'm telling you, a lot of people up here don't have them. The houses do not have central AC. Almost all of them don't, at least these older ones. We're coming up here. Thanks, Chris. Good luck. One little joint supplement. You know this powerful little pill is great for your joints. It even has powerful benefits to help increase your mobility and flexibility. But the joint supplements of today are sadly incomplete because they don't give you the joint relief you're looking for. Until now. Introducing the complimentary two-week sample of Instaflex, our most powerful joint formula ever. It's the number one selling joint supplement at GNC. The only thing our complimentary sample of Instaflex is missing is the price. Because right now, we're offering adults a complimentary two-week sample as part of a nationwide giveaway. Call and claim your sample today. 1-800-608-9424. Instaflex provides powerful, effective joint relief for your knees, hands, even your hips. Prove it to yourself by calling now for your complimentary sample. Instaflex is available at GNC, Walgreens, and CVS. But you can only get your complimentary two-week sample by calling 1-800-608-9424. Call now for your two-week Instaflex sample. 1-800-608-9424. You've been lied to. Lied to by Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, best-selling author, and I want to give you free access to my new DVD set, The Millionaire Black Box. Because after losing 35% in my IRA in the crash years ago, I said enough. And since then, I've filmed interviews with dozens of millionaires across the country. I was shocked to discover they don't use mutual funds or worry about stock market crashes. They make double digits in good years and bad. Call now to get this DVD where millionaires reveal five specific wealth strategies like private lending contracts, how to use your IRAs or cash in the bank to make potential double digits each year, tax-free retirement income using the biggest benefits left in the tax code, and how to beat inflation with two strategies you'll never hear from Wall Street. Call 1-800-324-3030 to get free access to the Millionaire Black Box videos and learn the secrets the ultra-rich use to grow your money and protect your wealth. Plus, the next 47 callers get a free copy of my best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire. Just cover shipping and handling. Call 800-324-3030. Again, that's 1-800-324-3030. 1-800-324-3030. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you you're going to explain? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot reach Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa. hey, hey, hey. 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 Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make. Wait a minute. Now. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Because you're scared of your property. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at victimlesscrimespree.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. 
PorcupineRealEstate.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up what you want. Just dial on in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. As usual, lots of stuff on the table to talk about tonight. The young man with Down syndrome who wants to uh, fight professionally, I think. Mark's got the story about him, the state of Florida, apparently. I think it was Florida, standing in the way. Uh, We'll tell you about that, and we actually just had a call come in from Florida. He was talking about moving to New Hampshire, and we didn't mention he was likely considering moving here because of the Free State Project. I'm pretty sure that was what was behind the the call, the idea being let's move liberty-loving people from all around the world, all around the country, all to the same place. New Hampshire was chosen in it a was vote. Chosen, it was chosen because it is has a low population, a small area, um, a deep sea port. Um, it's no already, income tax. It, yeah, no income tax, no sales, sales tax. tax. Uh, adults don't have to wear seat belts. It's the freest of the 50 states as rated by the Mercatus Center and five of their ratings uh, over time. There's actually 101 reasons to move to New Hampshire, which you can find over at freestateproject.org. The idea is to bring liberty-minded people together where we could actually have an impact and make a difference in a place that's already more freedom-oriented than most places in the United States. So that was what was kind of motivating his phone call. That's what's motivating somebody to leave Florida, which, you know, it's a little more comfortable a lot of the time down in Florida uh, during certain parts of the year, and it can get kind of uncomfortable up here in New Hampshire. But that's a good thing because— Wages tend to be higher, though. It uh, What, in New Hampshire? Yeah. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Uh, but it's a good thing that it's uncomfortable here because it really separates the serious people from the talkers. It separates the doers from the people who just sit behind a keyboard and pound away thinking they're going to somehow achieve freedom— uh, by posting and reposting things on Facebook. If you're really serious about freedom, this is the place to be. Go to freestateproject.org. And I have to say, I really like seasons. I never had seasons in Florida before. There, it's hot and less, slightly less hot. Uh, maybe slightly cool and during a, a few weeks of the year. But You can put the top down in the winter yeah, in Florida. Beyond that, yeah. you know, there's, there's no real change that happens. You don't see leaves coming off of a tree. Uh, the landscape doesn't change to white, fluffy snow. Uh, there's such such great contrast here that uh, it's it's just amazing. And I, I, I think fall and spring are my two favorite seasons, but there's a lot to like about summer and winter. What I can really see the contrast is when I like slip on the ice and bang my hip. I can really yeah. feel the contrast then. Yeah. Well, um, you got to be careful. You do have to be careful. There's always crampons. I got it through. Uh, I got through the entire winter without a slip and fall this year. I was really proud of That's myself. It's awesome. Going to get older, you'll really appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Indeed. Hey, tell me about this uh, guy with Down syndrome. What's going on there? This is coming from Change.org. Oh, by no means my, my favorite uh, uh, website for <laughs> things, but okay. uh, he's uh, started a petition there, and I actually signed this petition, and hmm. I thought that it would be worth sharing because I think it, uh, at least from his standpoint. I think this is completely fair. So he says, "Here's my name's Garrett um, Haleve, and I'm a 24-year-old with Down syndrome who's been training as a mixed martial arts fighter for over four years in Florida. Since I became um, involved in mixed martial arts, it's become a very important part of my life. I was recently denied the opportunity to compete as a MMA fighter. This is not the first time I have been denied. These denials undermine my progress in my sport and embarrass me. If you can help me secure an opportunity to compete in the sport I love by, excuse me, you can help me by uh, signing this petition. As I try to make the next step in my MMA career, Disability Rights Florida, the state protection and advocacy system, is uh, representing me in an effort to access true competition. I'm qualified, able, and ready to fight. By the way, I, there's a picture of him here, and he looks qualified, able, and ready to fight. Um, I but he has Down syndrome. He has Down syndrome. He looks like he has Down syndrome too. I used is that to, supposedly putting someone at a disadvantage? I well, I, I, everybody has disadvantages, Ian. Yeah, we we all have disadvantages. Lots of different types of disadvantages, and we all overcome our disadvantages in whatever ways we o- overcome them. I would say that his Down syndrome probably gives him a disadvantage in fighting. That's none of my business. He doesn't care, obviously. He's ready to ready to go. It's none of my business. If that's what he wants to do, then I'm 
I support him. My love for this sport led me to create Garrett's Fight Foundation to help promote MMA within the special needs community, including disabled veterans. I'm the spokesperson, instructor, and director at Garrett's Fight Foundation. My job provides me with an income, career, and means to self-sufficiency. Under current law, Garrett's Fight Foundation could sponsor bouts, but the Florida legislature just challenged the law. Going Changed full- or challenged? I'm sorry. I, I, for whatever reason, my glasses are kind of um, not helping me see at this moment in time. So going forward on my nonprofit foundation will not be allowed to sponsor amateur bouts. Mm. I'm very worried about my income, my foundation, and my future in my sport. I need your support. In August 2013, the Florida State Boxing Commission issued a cease and desist order against a promoter who had scheduled me to fight due to lack of mm. sanctioning by one of Florida's amateur sanctioning organizations, the World Fighting Organization. So this is actually a team up between the Florida government and one of these sanctioning groups. So some sort of private The Florida State Boxing Commission actually sounds like the government, doesn't it? Mm, yeah, it does. I mean, That's I'm, the group that has not given him his, their seal of approval? They issued the a cease and desist order. So um, anyway, uh, it's, it's just, I was fully prepared to, I am fully prepared to progress in MMA. I deserve and need an equal opportunity. I'm sponsored by the National Down Syndrome Society. The mission of the NDSS is to, to be the national advocate for the value, acceptance, and inclusion of people with Down Syndrome. Together, we want to raise awareness about discrimination I'm facing and put an end to it as I strive for full inclusion and full participation in the sport of my choosing. So um, I'm going to put this uh, petition up at uh, facebook.freetalklive.com. Yeah, you've been really hot on this story for uh, quite a few days, and it just hasn't gotten on the air. Well, I I think that, you know, when you you don't defend the least of us, you're not defending the best of us. Mm -hmm. We all have uh, things that hold us back. We all have these things that uh you know in our lives that this disabilities i suppose we mm-hmm. could call them right like we all have abilities and we all have disabilities and garrett's got an ability he's got the ability to fight and i know what a technical thing this is i was an you know sort of an amateur boxer and i did this stuff and i understand completely that you know he's developed a portion of his brain to the point that he's you know, he's a genius at this. Somebody who can fight well is it's a form of intelligence. It's a it's a skill. And he's, you know, fighting at, you know, a high skill level. He deserves to be able to do that. That's what drives him. That's what motivates him. I've got things that drive me. The listeners, they've got dr- things that motivate them. Absolutely. Garrett deserves the opportunity to compete. They've changed some sort of law, is what he was saying. Well, they're trying to protect him. Oh, he's a dumb dumb. He can't figure out how to uh, make up his own mind. The other fighters will pick on him. They're just using him as their punching bag or whatever these things these people are saying. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I I guess it's possible that that's going on. I think it's unlikely that Garrett's going to spend the time and the energy to set up his own foundation. Just and so he to can go, go get his butt whipped. And to go on uh, <laughs> uh, change.org to put to put up a petition just so he can have his friends beat him up on a sanctioned organization <laughs> and that he can get a second place ribbon for it. I mean, that is the height of hubris yeah. and stupidity if somebody claims that. Well, maybe they're protecting the other boxers from Garrett. I mean, maybe they're worried that this guy's going to get in there and clean up and make these regulars look like losers. I, I hey, don't. you just got your butt kicked by a kid with Down syndrome. I doubt very seriously that the Florida State Boxing Commission is going to be making the decision based on that. I think it's. I doubt you. I doubt about look, that either. I don't think they changed the law of, because of him either. It there's sound, all you, kinds of things you can't. Uh, people, th- these people can't. People with who are sufficiently low IQ can't choose to have sex. They can't choose who where they live. They can't choose with whom they work. They can't choose how to work. They can't choose anything in their lives. They are not adults. They are the equivalent of a 10-year-old in the body of a, tw- in this case, 24-year-old. And it's disgusting. We either treat 24-year-olds like 24-year-olds or we t- treat 24-year-olds like 10-year-olds, but you can't pick which ones you can and which ones you can't. Yeah, but how far do you go with this, Mark? With the consent, the allow- that's how far. Okay, all right. So if uh, if Freedom's somebody in a the wheelchair, answer. what's the question? If somebody in a wheelchair wants to compete with the uh, the regular people yes. who stand up, they should be able to just go. Why the, shouldn't they enter the ring and and fight? Absolutely. If a w- person in a wheelchair wants to to go against a guy with uh, jousting mm-hmm. on a horse and get himself <laughs> impaled, I, who am I to say? 
it's not my business. It's their business. Now, in the case of Garrett, he's gotten this far. You can't do anything to prevent him from fighting. You can only prevent him from fighting in a sanctioned bout where he can get sort of credit mm -hmm. and ranking. So he can go and fight at any MMA school he wants and yeah. learn how to do that. They haven't put that kind of uh, restriction on him. Likely they could if they felt like it. But Well, I wonder what other options are there. I mean, does it have to be in Florida? Could he go to Alabama or Texas, some other place where the rules aren't as strict, where there's maybe more openness? Ian, he has, he has Down syndrome. He lives with his parents. Come on. I, mean, I does didn't he know where he lived. I don't know where he lives either. I'm taking a wild guess. All right. Well, you're, you're taking a pretty wild guess. There's a guy with Down syndrome that runs his own restaurant. So it's certainly possible these folks can take care of themselves. Uh, there, there's more on the way here. The answer is just your move. 855-450 free. It's Free Talk Live. Hi, everyone. I'm Chuck Woolery. After putting a few thousand couples together on Love Connection, you know that nothing kills romance faster than bad breath. Smart Mouth gets at the cause of bad breath without the burn. And you get clean breath for about 12 hours. Other mouthwashes only prevent bad breath for about an hour. Gum and mints, well, they just cover it up. Use Smart Mouth in the morning for great breath all day. Rinse in the evening for clean, kissable breath all night. You can even wake up without morning breath. Smart Mouth, for 12 hours of real clean breath, look for the green box at your favorite store. I try to put myself out there, but it seems they're all the same. Just telling me what I want to hear. Don't fret. You can find your car insurance soulmate. It's easy at Geico.com. You can pay your bill, manage your policy, and you could even save some major cash. If we could reach through the computer to pull your chair out for you and give you a kiss on the hand, we would. Because you deserve to be in a happy, healthy car insurance relationship. That's what life is all about. For a free rate quote, visit Geico.com. Thanks to Bitcoin, LRN.FM is able to provide our free-to-air satellite channel across North and Central America. You can listen to LRN.FM 24-7 via satellite for no monthly cost. Learn more about our satellite channel at sat.lrn.fm. And if you'd like to help us continue to expand, you can send us Bitcoins via the address you'll find under the Bitcoin graphic in the right column of LRN.FM. To learn more about Bitcoin, visit weusecoins.com. That's weusecoins.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Kane in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, July 16th, 2014. Silver is trading at $20.62 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,296 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $618. Antiwar.com reports, though U.S. officials continue to downplay the story, spy scandal after spy scandal in Germany is taking its toll on bilateral relations, and some are saying that this is now the most tense relations have been during the post-war era. German Chancellor Angela Merkel says that the spying is unacceptable, but the real story is that she doesn't believe that, even if the U.S. says they will stop, they actually will. Expelling the senior CIA representative from Berlin was a big move, but analysts say it is likely only the beginning, as Germany moves into large-scale efforts to root out U.S. spies wherever they can be found. Ironically, it is Germany's ongoing parliamentary probe into U.S. spying and surveillance that they believe will would itself be the most targeted by U.S. spies. And panel chair Patrick Sensberg says the committee is using a non-electronic typewriter to keep internal communications secure from U.S. digital surveillance. The evidence is that U.S. spying against top German officials 
is ubiquitous, and the probe is investigating not only past operations, but ongoing ones, and doesn't want to tip the US off as to exactly how much they know. Germany has expressed support in the past for an EU-centric secure communication system to avoid the current system, riddled with NSA-imposed back doors. The system may be years from operational, however, and in the interim, secure communications means turning back the clock 40 to 50 years. You can support FPP Radio by joining the FANS program. FANS are friends, allies, and numerary supporters. FANS help FPP afford to produce more original content. To learn more or to join the FANS program, visit fans.fppradio.com. That's F-A-N-S dot FPPradio.com. Reuters reports, Israel resumed its airstrikes in the Gaza Strip six hours after implementation of a truce was to have begun. Attacks in the Gaza Strip killed at least three Palestinians in the early hours this morning and destroyed the house of Mahmoud Zahar, who is believed to be hiding elsewhere in the first apparent targeting of a top Hamas political leader. The week-old conflict seemed to be at a turning point on Tuesday, with Hamas defying Arab and Western calls to cease fire and Israel threatening to step up an offensive that could include a ground invasion of the densely populated enclave of 1.8 million people. Gaza medical officials say 191 Palestinians, including at least 150 civilians, among them 31 children, have been killed by Israeli rocket fire. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. Breitbart reports, venture capital billionaire Thomas Draper has announced that his campaign to break California up into six states has reached the required minimum number of signatures and will appear on the 2016 ballot. The Six California Plan is a response to the perceived dysfunction of a state whose staggering size has left citizens unable to enjoy self-government. Six California spokesman Roger Salazar told Reuters, the idea is to create six states with responsive local governments. States that are more representative and accountable to their constituents. The initiative draws strength from California's specific resentment of the Bay Area, which provides much of the Golden State's political class and dominates its uneven economic growth. The plan is staunchly opposed by Governor Jerry Brown and other Democrats and viewed with some degree of skepticism by Republicans as well, but it may have some wider resonance. Draper put an additional $750,000 of his own money into the initiative in February as he pushed for the initiative to collect over the 800,000 required signatures. Even if the initiative is passed, it would likely have to be ratified by Congress after 2016 to take effect. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. This is the Onion Week in Review. In a landmark 5-4 to four decision issued this Wednesday, the Supreme Court ruled to allow Americans to cram cash directly into politicians' mouths. The ruling, which effectively eradicates former prohibitions against stuffing checks and stacks of $100 bills straight down the throats, ears, and other orifices of presidential and congressional candidates, is expected to fundamentally alter the ways American politicians have large quantities of money shoved right into their bodies. In football music news this week, the 1985 Chicago Bears reunite to record their first new material since the Super Bowl shuffle. The group says the new material will be darker and more introspective than its shuffle era work. And in this week's op-ed pages, a man asks why, if God exists, doesn't he throw us like a really f***ing sweet party? In other news, an increasing number of men feel pressured to accept realistic standards of female beauty. FedEx confirms that more than 600,000 people try to mail themselves each year. And a recovering alcoholic doesn't need friends to have a good time. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. We're launching into the third hour of the program. Disturbing spying news coming out of Glenn Greenwald, firstlook.org. 
Uh, of course, likely coming originally from Edward Snowden. Got the latest on that. Your call is certainly welcome about uh, whatever's on your mind tonight. It's Ian here with you. And Mark. You can also join us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm, so feel free to hop on over there and get interactive with us. Uh, you'll sound a lot better if you call through Skype. James is on the line in Arizona. You're on Free Talk Live, James. Yes, Mark. Yes, sir. How you been? Well, you? Don't ask That's if you don't fine, actually care. You. Go ahead, both of you. James, okay, what were you minister. calling about? You're on I the radio. Love you too. Well, I'd love to see human freedom spread throughout the world, uh, Ian. And you can call me a warmonger for that. But it's funny when uh, a co-host of yours says 9-11 is a legitimate terrorist attack. You don't even say anything to him when he's sitting right next to you. But uh, what? I want to answer your question about uh, that's about was that something Johnny that happened Ray. tonight? No, but it did happen. Johnny Ray was sitting right next to you when he called 9/11 a legitimate, a real legitimate terrorist attack, and you call me a warmonger. Okay, I don't but understand anyway, I your point. Can you clarify for me? You don't think saying that 9/11 is a real legitimate terrorist attack is suggest is defending evil in and of itself? And that, I don't know what you mean by that. You don't think that 9-11 well, is a I real, mean, legitimate terrorist attack? Are you a truther? Are you a 9-11 truther? No. Actually, it was a terrorist attack, illegitimate on its face. It was mass murder. But since you guys are all well, progressive— Well, doesn't legitimate me, terrorist suggest that a person is saying that it is a terrorist, a terrorist attack? No, he was defending it. Okay. Just, he was defending the 19 a-holes that committed it. I, I, I wasn't here. I don't recall him defending. Uh, by, I'm sorry, I James. I don't. I don't recall. I'm going to put you on hold. Uh, I, I don't recall Johnny Ray defending the people who attacked on 9/11. Can you give me some more context on that, please? Go ahead. Check out 325 Free Talk Live. Uh, but my 325. Ian, Are you talking about 325. March? 325. Very good, Mark. Uh, you were not in studio, I don't believe. Uh, anyway, wow. it's this whole thing about you guys are actually just progressives in my mind. And okay. on the right wing side, you're more libertine than, uh, say, a conservative libertarian such as myself, who does love America, respects the institutions that have evolved over hundreds <laughs> of years. As much as I want to topple or downgrade, super downsize them in a big way. Uh, but, but do you I understand you that question, more than half – wit more than, His name's James. I'm sorry, James. Please more, don't call me wit, Whatever, Mark. man. Um, more do you still than, call him Bernard? What's that? Do you still call him Bernard? Sometimes just for kicks. You know what his middle – I know his middle right, name too. for kicks, but you got over it, right. Um, don't call me wit, but go on. Oh, God. So um, the – the question I would have for you on this is do you realize that the United States government spends more than half of its discretionary funds on the military and you want to downsize? Where are you going to downsize if you don't downsize on the military? I actually think that – and not only think, believe, and know that the one thing our government should spend money on and it's in the Constitution is our military. And we live in a very dangerous planet that – Actually, I'm pretty Never sure the Constitution says the military isn't supposed to uh, exist. The, in the army. Yeah, the, was it just the army? The army needs to be re, um, brought up uh, every two years. But the Navy is, Navy is okay. Um, they didn't have an Air Force when they wrote the Constitution. Indeed, the Air Force is an outcropping of the army. All right, so basically most of the military wouldn't exist if the government actually followed the Constitution. Isn't that right? Um. Welcome to the year of our Lord, 2014, Ian, where there is an Air Force. Okay. Well, well thanks for the call, James. 855-450-FREE. That's the pro-XPN toll-free line. My point being that if the government was actually following its own constitution, they wouldn't have a military well, because they would only bring it together at the time of it, it was needed for defense purposes. That's more right? of the spirit of the Constitution than the letter of the Constitution. The Constitution's pretty clear that the government needs to re-up funding every two years mm -hmm. for the military. And they do. It's a National Defense Authorization, authorization Bill, and they do it actually every year. They, they authorize the spending for um, the military. So, you know, they're following the Constitution. It's just the Constitution was written with the uh, loopholes for, um, you know, people that did want a standing army. The Many of the founders did mm -hmm. not want a standing army. It was a huge issue back then. But 
you know, when it comes to when it comes to war, uh, James is able to point to a couple of instances, like for instance, uh, Germany and Japan, where the uh, you know at the culmination of the world wars. Finally, the two defeated uh, enemies are beaten so badly that they can't come uh, back from it. But what he doesn't look at when he advocates for might, you know, military might, um, as a solution to problems, is he doesn't look at every other single conflict. The fact is, is that the U.S. was, um, at the start of World War II, had the 17th largest army in the world behind Romania. We're talking hmm. about the third largest geographical nation having the 17th largest army. That's a pretty small military for um, its size. Times have changed. Yeah, and you know, World War II catapulted the United States into supposedly reluctant superpower status. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, let's not forget United States participation in World War I. That, uh, that caused the, um, the imbalance that then was precipitated World War II, Hitler's rise, the Treaty of Versailles, Hitler's rise, and, and the whole thing. But it also precipitated uh, because the U.S. And, and Europe and France, excuse me, uh, Britain and France gave money to Russia to stay in World War I. The only anti war party in, in Russia at the time was the, was the Bolsheviks. So it's pretty clear that, in fact, the communist rise, which, of course, uh, James dislikes, too. He didn't like the Nazis. He doesn't like the communists. He doesn't like uh, Imperial Japan. But Imperial Japan just doing what Imperial Great Britain did. Um, you know, all these other empires. They did it a little later, and I think that that's... Um, they did it when uh, when we have electronic mediums to communicate with things, and it, it looks worse for them. And I'm not defending any of the actions of uh, Imperial Japan, but I'm not defending the actions of Imperial the Imperial U.S., the Imperial uh, Great Britain, or in Imperial France either. All you have to do is just wave a flag, the United States flag, and it makes everything okay. You can kill all the people you want to kill as long as it's in the name of freedom. There you go. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I'm sorry. I don't believe, I don't buy the suggestion that he made at the front of his call that you know that uh, somehow freedom could be spread through violence i don't think it works that way and i would also you know he seems uh, really sort of upset about this whole idea that uh, of the the 911 attacks i think it is obvious that it's us and western intervention in the middle east that has these folks whipped up these religious zealots. You. Just ask them. Right, right. These religious zealots whipped up to uh, do something about it. Osama bin Laden made it pretty clear what he was upset about. The two largest nations that those terrorists were from was Yemen and Saudi Arabia. And the United States backs both of the leaders of both of those countries. Imagine for a second that you are a citizen, you know, an unhappy citizen of a country with a king. That king is going nowhere. The only way you can imagine that king goes away, and you believe that he's a terrible, evil person who's, you know, God doesn't like or whatever it is that you believe, the only way he's going to go someplace is if his uh, guard dogs get whipped enough to get out of the country. So you come up with a plan to get him out of the country. That plan, well, you saw it on 9-11. This is what they say. These are the words that come out of their mouth. Yeah, they use Israel as a, as a cudgel. They use it as a pawn in this situation. And I don't think that funding should be going to foreign countries. U.S. taxpaying mm -hmm. dollars should be going to foreign countries. That's ridiculous. Speaking of foreign countries, GCHQ, Mark, this is the organization that is the equivalent of the NSA over in uh, Great Britain. According to new documents released by uh, Glenn Greenwald over at firstlook.org, provided by none other than the boy who must not be named as far as the NSA is concerned, Edward Snowden, the GCHQ has dedicated an entire wing of its surveillance arm to actively monitoring and manipulating the status of petitions organizations, and websites at will in order to influence the public opinion. What? That's right. The security apparatus in Great Britain, and presumably the NSA as well, because a lot of times they're doing the same stuff. Yeah, it seems unlikely uh, they wouldn't be. The security apparatus in Great Britain has been manipulating things like, you know, web polls, petitions, things like that. They're using their techniques, their hacking abilities to... Try to sway public opinion. We'll tell you more about it and what they've been up to here, according to Ed Snowden and Glenn Greenwald here in moments. Toll-free numbers coming back. One little joint supplement. You know this powerful little pill is great for your joints. It even has powerful benefits to help increase your mobility and flexibility. 
but the joint supplements of today are sadly incomplete because they don't give you the joint relief you're looking for until now. Introducing the complimentary two-week sample of Instaflex, our most powerful joint formula ever. It's the number one selling joint supplement at GNC. The only thing our complimentary sample of Instaflex is missing is the price. Because right now, we're offering adults a complimentary two-week sample as part of a nationwide giveaway. Call and claim your sample today. 1-800-608-9424. Instaflex provides powerful, effective joint relief for your knees, hands, even your hips. Prove it to yourself by calling now for your complimentary sample. Instaflex is available at GNC, Walgreens, and CVS. But you can only get your complimentary two-week sample by calling 1-800-608-9424. Call now for your two-week Instaflex sample. 1-800-608-9424. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. You know how annoying it is when someone keeps stopping mid-sentence as though he or she were asking you a series of questions? Avoid doing that. It sounds unnervingly tentative, and it imposes upon the listener to help you complete the thought. And if you're a job seeker, this alone could be a deal killer. An effective communicator sounds more confident. Complete the thought. Avoid making the listener impatient. With money and attention so scarce now, Effective communication skills have never been more important. Cutting through the clutter rather than blending into the blah, blah, blah will help you connect better no matter what the conversation. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Survivalspeech.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up what you want right here, toll free at 855-450-FREE. And you can join us online over at freetalklive.com. We're big fans of Bitcoin at Free Talk Live, and also gold and silver. And if you want to grab some gold and silver, you can do that at gold.freetalklive.com. But something else, uh, you know, if you do have Bitcoins, 
you can put them to work for you and helping make you more free. Yeah, there's lots of different ways that you can spend your bitcoins. We were just talking about this, uh, you know, site that apparently is bigger than Amazon in Japan. What's the name of it again, Ian? Rakuten. Rakuten. Um, I'll try to remember that, but it uh, doesn't sound likely to me. Anyway, um, one of the things you can do is get a passport uh, from passportsforbitcoins.com. There's a lot of people um, that are getting second passports or renouncing their citizenship. Just last year, it was an all-time record for people renouncing their U.S. citizenship, but people are doing it all around the world, whether it's for governmental intrusion or to protect their wealth or um, privacy issues or foreign policy um, disputes that you might have with your, your native government, um, pointless regulations, onerous taxation, a refuge. It's a might be a good idea to get a second passport or to change your citizenship. You can check out the St. Kitts program at passportsforbitcoin.com. Now, obviously, with a name like passportsforbitcoin.com, they take bitcoins. But it's just another way that bitcoins provide you with more freedom. Passportsforbitcoin.com. All right, let's continue here. Michelle Sevens on the line with us, former co-host on Free Talk Live. Hey, Michelle. Hi, how are you? Good. What's on your mind tonight? Well, I'm I'm really upset, but I'm also oh, actually no. really excited at the same time. Yeah. So I was a co-host up there uh, when uh, George Donnelly um, and I think it was James Cox started the opt out, the TSA opt out campaign. Yeah, it was really popular. Was, Swept the nation. Yes, and um, then Meg McLean had gotten. Um, harassed at an airport down in Florida while down there doing some activism and mm-hmm. and um, people worldwide you know kind of took on this in Germany there was the right white rose society and they picked it up going around to airports and basically being almost naked with you know signs painted on their bodies saying that this was um, you know an invasion of privacy and that it, the it the government was crossing the line and requiring people to basically strip or go through cancer screeners and things like that. Well, um, in 2005, which was five years prior to me ever doing a, a show, some legislation was passed through the Homeland Security Act, which uh, is incrementalized. And um, although it was first supposed to go into effect in 2008, it's been pushed out to be fully adopted by 2016, but what I'm about to tell you has already started. It's actually here, and that is that to travel within the United States by plane or any, it's going to be any other federally regulated um, uh, travel, you are going to have to have a real ID driver's license or Which a passport. New Hampshire doesn't, ha- or a passport. So New Hampshire doesn't have the real ID, and they're amongst uh, a handful several of states. states, several states that didn't uh, didn't do this real ID thing that uh, the the government th- they really did it in a nasty way. It was uh, tacked on to some Senate bill and passed in the middle of the night. And it's one of these, you know, these big government things that uh, people have a, a real problem with, but. Um, are you saying that anybody now, anybody who's flying uh, from New Hampshire needs to have a passport when they fly? No, it's going to be adopted fully by 2016. Kentucky it has already started, and that it will be go into effect by July 21st in is five there, days. Is, is there a but name the for why, this, uh, Michelle, something we can look for to learn more about? I, I sent Mark the links. So yep. he has them. He should have them in the show notes and stuff. But yep, absolutely. The, right um, here I've got uh, frequently asked questions from DHS.gov. Phase mm-hmm. 4, boarding federally regulated commercial aircraft. A driver's license or de- identification card from a non-compliant state may only be used in conjunction with a second form of ID for boarding Whoa. federally regulated commercial aircraft. No sooner than 2016, it says. Wow. Now, it goes further, and the reason why I'm calling today, I've been tweeting about this. That's my social media of choice, but um, and talking to people because, as you know, I, I no longer have a passport, and I used to come and go from the country pretty regularly. Yeah, you had and, a, a hus- um, your husband was uh, foreign-born, and your your kids yep. are, you know, multi, sort of multinational. Yeah, dual citizenship. Yep, yep, yep. yep. And so for me, it was, you know, I have home, I had homes in other countries, so it was a big deal when I um, was not able to get my passport renewed during 
due to having tax levies in excess of fifty thousand dollars. Now, mm-hmm. no charges have ever been brought against me, and I haven't been I've not been charged with anything. But the government doesn't have to charge you. All they have to do is make a claim, and you have the burden of proof to prove that they right. Um, and then the, you know, while wrong. they make the claim, they get to revoke all your privileges that they've gri- given you because right you know should be a right to travel, but it's not. If it were a right to travel, you wouldn't have to get their permission slip in order to do it. And so basically they're saying, well, Michelle, you either pay up uh, or we're just going to make it so you can't leave. Yes. And now the the reason so it was so significant today was this um, man by the name of Justin Gray, who is a resident of the District of Columbia, which, you know, the nation's capital. Uh, he was stopped by TSA. And it's it's all over social media. And, of course, you know, he's got – tens of thousands of followers, and he's a, a news correspondent, and so he they has attracted a lot of attention, and he's poked fun and said, oh, it's because these TSA agents, they're so stupid, they didn't even know where the District of Columbia was. It's completely a smokescreen. It is absolutely not about that, and I don't know what would possess him to lead people astray. He cannot possibly be that ignorant. But at the same time, just a few days ago, Kentucky, there were 50 EPA, um, Environmental Protection Agency, employees that were having to be going to a conference in Atlanta, Georgia. And their booking agent, who was arranging for their travel, found out that they were not going to be able to board flights because Kentucky is not, has, has not come into compliance. They've made special arrangements so that these 50 people, because, of course, they're special, are going to get to travel. But from there, there's been an, an announcement made that if you are going to be traveling after July 30, 21st and you're in Kentucky, they're one of the first states to be implementing this new, you know, this new regulation. Not only can you not board a flight within the United States, traveling within the United States, mm-hmm. you're not going to be able to go into any federal buildings either. <laughs> it's, I, you know, I, it, it sounds wild, right? Um, I mean, it's like, it's, it's a it's lot to... Here, not- Germany is in the United States. It's here. It's not coming. But it's, it's already here. Wow, well, man. Even if, even if it's not here, it's uh, according to this website, it will be here no sooner than 2016, right? This is all the more reason to secede and secede now. I see no reason whatsoever How about to passports for Bitcoin.com? Yeah, that's another option and get for you. those second passports. I kick myself in the booty every single day. That I did not, because I always just kept my American passport. Cause, Wait, you know, I wonder if my world passport's going to work for, <laughs> to get me into these places. You'll be lucky if your world passport doesn't just get you into jail. Check out the world passport when you get a chance, Michelle. And thanks for the heads up. This is a disturbing story. We'll definitely follow up on it. Appreciate hearing from you tonight. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We talked about something like this happening in the past, but it's been almost a decade since the real ID thing got batted back. It's Free Talk Live. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. If you'd like to listen to GCN programs on the go, I have great news. GCN has created a Droid and iPhone application, and it's free. Just as easy as going to GCNlive.com, click on the banner and download. Before you know it, you'll be listening to your favorite hard-hitting GCN shows, live or on demand, right on your Droid or iPhone, 24-7 and on the go. So download the Droid and iPhone app free by clicking on the banner at GCNlive.com. Thanks again for listening to GCNlive.com. Again, that's GCNlive.com. Free Talk Live, the show where anyone can call about whatever they want. And we do mean anyone. No, I, I'm, I can understand the time cue, but the uh, what I know is wiser than anything else. Like God created one day, I created four simultaneous days in one rotation of Earth. At what point did you become the wisest human, Gene Ray? Well, I've, I've learned everything. When you, when you know everything, there's nothing to know. Okay, well, now, you said you're getting ready to write a book on it. When can we expect to no, see it? No, I, I don't have a publisher yet. Uh, mm. uh, a lot of morning morning touch it. And so, uh, you touch but, it in the morning? Uh, well, well sometimes, not much. Yeah. <laughs> How old are you, G- uh, Dr. Gene Ray? Uh, 
I'm 78. Well, I told this black lady down in St. Pete, I said, when you die, you're going to come back as a white person. I said, I'm going to come back as a black person. I'm going to hate you, hawkish. <laughs> Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Hey guys, Mark Claire here, lionsofliberty.com, where we strive to advance the ideas of liberty daily. We bring you the Morning Roar. That's right, every Monday to Friday, we'll have a brand new edition of the Morning Roar, where we provide a roundup of some news stories that you may not find in the mainstream media or even in your typical social media news feed. We find stories that relate to the ideas of liberty and provide you with our liberty perspective on them. Every Monday, we have our longest-running feature, Mondays with Murray, named after the great libertarian Murray Rothbard, where we'll examine an article or an excerpt from his works and help convey his view, along with our little spin as well. We wrap it all up every Friday with Felony Friday, where our own John Odermatt goes out and takes a look at some sort of felony. There's felonies committed every day, you know, whether it's a felony committed by the police, a politician, or even an average citizen. You can find all of this and so much more over at lionsofliberty.com. Advancing the ideas of liberty daily. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Talk live. We'll take your calls about anything. 855 450 free. Disturbing news coming from our former co host there, Michelle Seven, talking about some travel restrictions that are going into effect apparently very soon in Kentucky. Maybe in your state they're already in effect. I don't know what the rollout plan is, which states are going in what order, how that's working. I, I haven't, you know, I don't know much more than what she called in to talk about. But Mark does have some of the links that she sent to him, and he's going to forward uh, put some of those up on our Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter, so you can look into this. But just a little bit of a, of a recap on on what happened. And by the way, I want to let you know you can go to freetalklive.com. You can post whatever links you want right there to a, the front page of our website, courtesy of our Reddit-based system that is totally free for you for you to use at freetalklive.com. So it was about a decade ago now at this point, probably eight years. Eight or nine years, because I know that, Mark, before we moved to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project, one of the things that happened before we arrived was the Real ID protests that were going on here. Right. Uh, Lauren Canario, who's one of the earliest movers for the Free State Project and a civil disobedience uh, superstar, she also did some really great street theater. I remember her and her husband, Jim, dressed up as Nazi soldiers. They set up a fake little checkpoint at the state house during some sort of rally that was being had there against the real ID thing and made a real point about how absolutely control freak kind of, you know, this thing is that this is scary stuff. This is very Nazi-esque. This is very control freak stuff. If you're not able to travel from state to state domestically Mm -hmm. without a passport, that's pretty crazy stuff. It is, and uh, and it was New Hampshire and several other states who had around, I think it was around 2005, when they basically told the federal government to screw off, that they aren't interested in jumping through the hoops. Because the, what was happening was the federal government had come out with these real ID, what was, what, what was it was called, it was essentially a national ID, 
Uh, they you know termed it real ID. That would it, it wouldn't sound like a national ID. So if you called it national ID, people wouldn't like it as much. And but the, it didn't really matter whether people liked it or not. They shoved this thing through at midnight on the back of uh, some other bill that was completely unrelated. And this is the kind of nasty, yeah. disgusting thing that these politicians do. Um, you know, I, I mean, I, I don't know how it is that people continue to use politician as being synonymous with liars and thieves, but still continue to uh, you know, say them? we need them. Yeah, no doubt. So they, you know, they pushed this real ID thing through. And what happened was it was a set of rules that were to be applied at all the state governments right. onto their existing state ID. So, Including biometric information, right? Yeah, I think that was part of it. Or at least, uh, no, if I recall correctly, Mark, it was the uh, the Department of Homeland Security's head, their boss man, could uh, arbitrarily determine what information would be on real ID. So I if they see. didn't include a thumbprint in the first year, he could decide five years later that he wanted a thumbprint and add that into the specs. And then the states would have to you know, do whatever it, they needed to do to implement that. And most of the but, state's complaints were that uh, this didn't come with funding. Well, that was the point. So they came down with this list of regulations, these rules that state IDs would have to follow in order to be real ID compliant. And they said, you've got to do this. Here you go. This is what you have to include. You're going to have a social security number. You're going to have a birth date. You're going to have this. You're going to have that. You know, certain specs. And the states that uh, that essentially said we're not going to do this, their reasoning was, well, you didn't give us money. So it wasn't like the states were caring about freedom right. or that the states cared about your privacy. We would never implement a national ID card as long as the nation doesn't give us money to do it. Yeah, that's pretty much what it broke down to. But regardless... Some states, including New Hampshire, did turn their nose up at this. Ask not what your federal government demands from you. Ask only how much they'll pay to implement it. And they don't have, uh, so New Hampshire doesn't have the real ID. They don't have the chip, the RFID chip. That was a big part of the real ID thing was that each new ID would have this RFID chip in it. Um, and, uh, you know, that freaks a lot of people out. But the real bad idea is that it would be a national identification card. And, the, of course, the theory was was that eventually this could be used to, or that whether or not the national ID card came about, that eventually they could control people going state to state. Because, you know, you know, you have to have the government's permission slip to go outside of the arbitrary boundaries called the yeah. country. Why not make it so you have to have their permission to go inside the arbitrary boundaries? I mean, if it's all about security and keeping people safe, and sure enough, well, I think here the, we are. I think the TSA, um, many people say it stands for thousands standing around, mm -hmm. is a good example that the government will throw all kinds of make-work programs in between you and your travel. I mean, they will, they will do whatever it takes, whatever you'll put up with along the way whatever it is oh sure uh, you know yeah. at this point they're letting uh, the little old ladies keep their shoes on but that's really about it hmm. um now that now you can have a knife as so long as it's tiny teeny tiny or oh, whatever really? uh, i think that that's what you know they're letting you keep certain things but it's really ridiculous all they really are is a water bottle conf confiscation service <laughs> it's pretty much true so we had some concerns about this back in the day that you know, this police state was going to continue to expand. We've talked about for years the stories about the TSA's Viper Squad, uh, which stands for something intermodal response. Why don't they ever call themselves the Kitten Squad? Yeah. Uh, so they uh, this Viper Squad goes to bus stations and train stations, and they set up temporary uh, security checkpoints where they'll operate for a full day. Uh, basically checking everybody going through the train station as though it were an airport. And it were, it, you know, it was stories like that that really suggested that maybe there's going to be more of this, that, that the Viper teams going to airports and or not airports going to train stations and actually in, in one story that we talked about in indianapolis they were hitting up bus stations not like greyhound stations but like bus stops they would stop at the you know the bus depot or wherever it is the the Jeez. you know the buses were leaving people in the in indianapolis and they were shaking people down there so if they could get away with that stuff then that means they'll try to do more of that kind of thing and now here you've got the, right off the Department of Homeland Security's website is what you were reading earlier, Mark, that by 2016, everybody traveling inside the United States, state to state, will have to show one of these government, the federal government real ID approved identifications it or says, a passport. It says no sooner than 2016, which could mean oh, 2316 sorry. if that's what they wanted to do. Um, they, they've got a little out here. Ah. But 
um, what Michelle's suggesting is is that what happened, uh, you know, today with the, the big story that's going around with the reporter that from Washington D.C. that uh, was was asked for a passport because supposedly the TSA agent didn't know that Washington D.C. was in the United States. Hmm. Um, uh, you know, I suppose that's a believable story. I don't know. I've I've heard all kinds of things. I had uh, a friend ask me one time if uh, if they had uh, if the moon was in Canada too. So I mean, <laughs> you know, people ask silly things. Um, it it just happens. But uh, you know, I mean, c- could she be right? Well, she may or may not be right in this circumstance. But she's certainly right that there's um, that the web the, the Department of Homeland Security at dhs.gov slash real dash id dash public dash faqs says mm. that uh, you know where are the different fa- what are the different phases of real ID enforcement and then it lists phase one through three and phase four is boarding federally regulated commercial aircraft. A driver's license or identification card from a non-compliant state like New Hampshire yep. may only be used. How many non-compliant states are there? I Ian? don't know. A sev- well, there are several, I believe. Okay, look that up. Uh, may only be used in conjunction with a second form of ID for boarding federally regulated commercial aircraft, and that the enforcement date is no sooner than 2016. Now, I wonder what the second form of ID will include. I, she had mentioned a passport. But does it have to be a U.S. passport? Could it be, for instance, uh, let's see, what happens if my state doesn't meet all the real ID requirements? Individuals without licenses from compliant jurisdictions may present alternative forms of identification, such as a U.S. passport, accepted by the agency. But it doesn't say what those other alternatives might be. It says uh, from Center for Immigration Studies at CIS.org that 41 states are compliant. Hmm. So... You know, well, I hope the New federal Hampshire... government doesn't recognize medical marijuana, and 27 states have that. I hope New Hampshire continues to be non-compliant, and I hope that what we'll find out is that maybe there aren't as many teeth in this as people are, you know, as, as might be the case. Because like, today, am I wrong? I thought you could still fly with no ID. You just have to be able to, you know, you just have to be willing to uh, be Put patted down. Isn't that still true? I don't More know. More coming up here on Free Talk Live. Protection, success, incorporate your business. LLC. If you're about to start a business, these three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why LLC.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-915-2955 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from LLC.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Incorporation, protection, success. Incorporate your business. Call now for your free guide. 1-800-915-2955. That's 1-800-915-2955. At 30dayfoodsupply.com, you can now purchase a -a one-of-a-kind product not available anywhere else. A meatless burger dry mix in four delicious flavors. With our new Oregon Trail Foods vegan burgers, all you do is add water and fry. They need no refrigeration. They're packaged in Mylar bags with an oxygen absorber for a long shelf life. They're non-GMO. They're gluten, soy, nut, and chemical-free, but they're loaded with flavor. And a good source of carbs and protein, yet low in sodium. Flavors include Italian, spicy Mexican, Chicken, six vegetable and black bean olive. Go to 30dayfoodsupply.com or call 541-229-0010 and order today. Eat them every day, take them camping, or save them for an emergency. Check them out at 30dayfoodsupply.com and click on the vegan burger icon. That's 30dayfoodsupply.com where all of our products are produced in Oregon by Oregon Trail Foods, 30dayfoodsupply.com. Do you need access to money? Do you need cash today? If you are receiving a structured settlement due to a lawsuit or you are receiving pension payments over a long period of time, the Money Settlement Hotline can get you instant funding now. With your cash today, you can pay off credit card debt, pay medical bills, fund your education, or improve your home. You don't need to wait. It's true. If you're receiving a structured settlement or pension payment spread out over time and you want a lump sum amount immediately, then you need to call now. 
They will turn your long-term structured settlement or pension payments into a lump sum larger cash payout, so you'll get all of your money instantly. If you have a structured settlement or pension and you want cash today, call the Money Settlement Hotline right now. 888-785-0616. 888-785-0616. That's 888-785-0616. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Do you love coffee as much as I love coffee? Here's a delicious way to drink the best of the best coffee and make a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox Coffee. And you can try a pound for free. All you do is cover shipping. It's organic, shade-grown, top 1% Arabica grade. 10% of future purchases help our efforts to give the gift of human freedom through at least 100 microloans via World Vision. For more information, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Moments remain here. The toll-free number is 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. We've got enough time to get your call in if you dial in right now. We've also got Skype. You can Skype in at username lrn.fm. And, hey, don't forget, you can join us online over at freetalklive.com to get interactive there. If you like what we're doing here on Free Talk Live, please become a Free Talk Live amplifier for 5 bucks a month. That's all that we're asking for there, and it makes a big difference for us when you do it because that 5 bucks a month gets used in ways that help promote Free Talk Live to help get us on more radio stations. Uh, we're on over 150 licensed FCC, licensed approved radio stations coast to coast and beyond, Um, now including actually Alaska, as a matter of fact. We'll officially announce that station coming up this weekend. Alaska's awesome, but um, we're even farther than that. We're in like Guam, Guam. uh, U.S. Virgin Islands. That's true. Uh, I would say Virgin Islands is not as far as Alaska. It's probably not, but it seems farther in people's minds, I think, you know. So, yeah, you can join us uh, and help us out. It makes a big difference in getting on new stations. It helps us in getting Free Talk Live on new pirate stations because not only do we have licensed FM stations, we also have unlicensed stations that carry the show, although it's a little harder to keep track of those. Uh, we've got uh, satellites that air the, we've got satellites that broadcast LRN.FM and Free Talk Live all across North Central America as well as now East West Africa and the central part of, uh, of Africa, which is, uh, is awesome. We've got people tuned in that way as well. Well, so you can help us get on more satellites around the world. You can help us do more internet advertising to bring new internet listeners on board with Google AdWords. That's one of the other projects we're doing. You can send us to conventions to smooch it up with the uh, industry bigwigs as we recently did in New York City. So all of these things are some of the ways that we spend your $5 per month. Uh, it's the, co- you know, the cost of a fancy cup of coffee at Starbucks. In fact, that might even be less than the cost of a fancy cup of coffee (laughs) these days. Go to amp.freetalklive.com. Get signed up. Get the perks like access to the AMP-only call-in lines, AMP-only podcast, the AMP-only Facebook group, which is the newest thing, and it's great. Go to amp.freetalklive.com. Let's go to Jim. He's in Lynchburg, Virginia. You're on Free Talk Live. Jim. Hey, guys. If you need somebody to go inspect your station in Guam, maybe in December, I might be your guy. <laughs> uh, are you a radio engineer? Uh, I can come up with some ID that says I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm not a radio engineer, but I'll take a look. Uh, it, yeah, it's yeah. not technically our station in Guam, so we wouldn't be able to authorize that. Yeah. But Free Talk Live owns no radio stations. <laughs> Fun idea. What was on your mind tonight, Jim? Hey, the TSA. I, I just, I'm just livid at the complete lawlessness of our president. Uh, yes, you're going to have a problem if you don't have an uh, if you if you if you're from New Hampshire. I mean, I guess that's not part of the United States anymore. However, if you came across the border, you know, from Iran all the way and you walked across the border in, in Mexico from Mexico, and you go to a border patrol agent and turn yourself in, 
Uh, you get your free medical care to get your wound from Afghanistan where you were shooting at our soldiers fixed. Then they hand you a notice to appear. It's a black and white form with whatever name you gave them, because, of course, you didn't have any ID or any form of uh, identification. And you can fly with that. If you just came off yeah. the battlefield... We heard something about there. this the other day on the show. Somebody had called in on this topic as though it were some sort of shocking thing. The last time I checked, you could fly with no ID. So the Conserva Clone talk show hosts have been p- parroting the story around like it's some big deal and uh, as though it's you know news. Maybe it's news to them, but uh, on this show, we've had people call in over the years who have told us about how they've successfully journeyed on airplanes with no ID whatsoever. Now, to be fair, it's been a little while since I think we've had one of those calls, but I still believe that this is possible, and I feel like someone had told me recently that they'd done it. I just forget who it was and in what circumstance I was told that. Maybe it was at Pork Fest. Um, but, you know, I think that it's still doable. You just have to be willing to be delayed as they kind of give you a, a tough time, may have send you through the extra sp- super special screening process. Yeah. And I mean, when it really comes down to people coming to this country, I think the biggest problem we have in this country is a welfare problem, not an immigration problem. Well, we can go off on a tangent, but I, you probably want to talk to someone else. So I want to keep it on the TSA. You mentioned something like that before the break, so I went on their website during the break. And you can fly with that ID, but you have to give them some sort of form, some information which they can verify through a database. Essentially, I guess, your social security number or some other things like that. Hmm. Um, have to be able to pull up a database and look at the picture and look at you. And that's another thing that I think I'm angry about with my driver's license. In Virginia, they just did an end run we, you know, you take, you have to have a picture, a driver's license, to be able to freely travel in Virginia. So you get your driver's license, and then without legislation, they just handed over all the digital pictures to the FBI, to the central database. <laughs> and, so, and so now they have facial recognition. And the only notice they gave you was when you go back to get a new picture, they say, "Don't smile." Like, what are you talking about? Well, it's all facial recognition. Uh, we're going to a central database, and mm. you know, just scaring stuff. Jim, thanks yeah, for your call yeah. tonight. I appreciate hearing from you at 855-450-FREE. I, I would really like to know how true that is. You know, they, There's one thing that they say on their website, and then well, there's the reality of how the, the plan is implemented. There's, I think I might believe it, and the reason is is that you buy, have to buy a ticket and a name, right? That's right. Yep. So then you, you, know, you go through, you say, you're there? Yep, I'm here. Uh, I don't have my wall. I'm sorry. I don't have my driver's license with me, and I just don't have time to go home, go back and get it. I'd like to get on my plane now, mm-hmm. please. Um, you know, you have to sort of be that person, and I wouldn't doubt that they do some level of cross checking, right? I mean, like something. I don't know. I mean, remember years ago when Sam Dodson, one of our uh, co hosts, a while back was traveling, he would regularly travel with no ID. Now, it's I'm too, not claiming it's that you have to have an ID, Ian. I'm only claiming that you have to identify yourself. Didn't he I say, he did I'm that. Sam Dodson? I don't know if he uh, if he did that. That's a good question. It's been a while. And it, it has also been a while since we had those calls from him. So maybe things have gotten worse okay. in the in that period of time. Just call listeners, um, hey, if you have an experience dri- That's what flying I want. whatever reason without a passport or with a, no ID. Without, a, without, without an ID— let us know. Yeah, that's that's what I want to hear about. I want to hear a story from somebody who has been through this in the last, let's say, three years. Uh, because it's probably been about three or four years since we've had Sam on the show on a regular basis to talk about that. And again, it is possible they've made things worse. I was reading today, Mark, about the, uh, the, the north border uh, with Canada and some of the places along, like in Vermont, where there's a, there's a town... Um, Derby space. Line. Derby Line, that's what it's called. And then there's another another town, obviously, on the other side there's, in Canada. Derby Line has a, a library that the, um, the you know, the, the, the border, the runs, border through runs through the library. That's right. And there's actually a black line on the floor in this place. But there are, there are like, three roads. So there's the main drag, like Main Street, and then there's I-91 or something like that. And both of those are ways to get into Canada. There were also three roads in town that until 2009 were not blocked to traffic. But apparently in they, 2009, they, they put up them. some kind of barriers on that ro- on those roads. Yeah. So it's definitely possible things have gotten worse since we've last heard about people flying with no ID. 
though I'm still very curious about it. Not curious enough to buy a ticket to Boston and uh, travel to Manchester and fly just to, just to see. It would be interesting to experiment with it and see what happens. But uh, if you have done so, would love to hear from you. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That is the Pro XPN toll-free line. So real quick, back to the story. GCHQ in the UK, they've been manipulating petitions online to try to influence public opinion, according to Glenn Greenwald, with the help of the Joint Threat Research Intelligence Group. The GCHQ and its staff have been carefully and closely swaying the opinion and browsing habits of users by selecting the information they read, the news they have access to, and the people who hear their messages of revolution. They even go so far as changing views on YouTube to signal boost certain messages or to prevent people from being able to effectively stream content that may be considered unfit for consumption by the government or the established representatives who let this sort of thing happen in the first place. They wow. have done things like the following change the outcome of online polls mass delivery of email messaging to support an information operations campaign mass delivery of sms messages to support said campaign disruption of video based websites hosting extremist content through concerted targeted uh, target discovery and content removal active skype capability provision of real time call records from Skype and bidirectional instant messaging and contact lists so they're getting information from Skype find private photographs of targets on Facebook uh, etc etc while some of the tactics are described as in development it is touted most of them as fully operational tested and reliable it adds we're only advertising tools here that are either ready to fire or very close to being ready uh, these angles of attack echo main, uh, many of the same social engineering com uh, campaigns launched by networks like 4chan and Reddit, who often deploy their concerted loyal database of users at a flurry of causes that either launched on the Internet itself or were external events that received unsolicited help from an indirect angle. So these guys have been uh, manipulating things online, and I'm sure we're just scratching the surface of this as usual. We don't have much more time to talk about it tonight, but you can bring it up tomorrow or talk about whatever's on your mind at that time. We'll see you then at freetalklive.com. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc, as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Cop Block Radio is up next, live after the news, on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates, online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagen with your Liberty Beat for Wednesday, July 16, 2014. 